Keith J. Carberry. Hi. You are, as far as I can tell, in either your late twenties or your early thirties. Yeah. Early That's my 30s, guess. Yeah. And and I think it's fair to say that, like me, you spent most of your childhood excited for the day you'd be able to conquer Hungary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what you're talking about is the period in school right before lunch, where you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, have I cannot to wait to go conquer Hungary. I have to go and conquer Hungary. Um, that, yeah, that's what they call it in, in uh, Rhode Island schools. And Yeah. Well, I went to Massachusetts schools, but it was it, the culture overlaps. Yes. Yes. The culture does. The culture does overlap. Um, hi. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, I... Uh, I've been messing with uh, Plex Amp all day, which is the like Plex affiliated um, like music player for when you have a bunch of music on your Plex, but the regular Plex app is terrible for music. Um, Plex is so, it's so like, fucking great. The, the Plex project in general has changed my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy with where my Plex is these days, uh, but uh, it was not good for music. So I wasn't using it, even though I have all of my good music there. And I'm not stressed about like, okay, I bought a lot of this music. I didn't buy a lot of this music. Um, uh, but the ones that it was important to me to buy, I've paid for. And now I can just stream stuff on YouTube music. But if I've got these nice files, I want to use them. So I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been figuring out Plex Amp today. That's my thing. I went to the library today okay. and I borrowed. Oh, and you have a very nice I do. Very Michigan library. I do have a, you have very a very Ann nice. Arbor library. I borrowed. Uh, Grant Morrison and Dave McKean's uh, graphic novel, uh, Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth, which I read as a teenager, and I want to read again. Uh, my memory is that it was like a deeply fucked up, capital F, capital U, Batman story, and I want to see see what that's like. I also borrowed a framed painting of a jackfruit <laughs> that I'm going to hang in my office Ooh. for the next four months i don't know what the loan is i didn't know you that. could rent paintings at the library yeah you can in ann arbor or borrow sorry borrow we're gonna rent it it's great it's really really yeah. good um uh okay well in the chats has got to say the bug club album keith posted that was on co-host was a great listen up until the stream yeah that's a great album i also have been listening to that album all day that is uh um rare birds an hour of song by the bug club these people put out three basically full-length albums in the year 2023. That's or I guess great. from October to October. They put out three That's hard to uh, do. full-length albums and an EP. <laughs> and, it, and it's all good. And their recent thing, um, Hour of Song, is phenomenal. Oh, my God. I am I am so excited to listen to it. Uh, uh, yeah. My recent Keith Music recommendation. By the way, if you're ever feeling like uh, Bandcamp, uh, is, you, you can no longer use the excellent Bandcamp Music recommendation service because the ghouls in charge fired a bunch of the people. Uh, just send Keith an ask on um, co-host. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, do that. I'll, I'll. There's two things that I will like way overspend time on for strangers asking me on the internet, and that's like tea and coffee questions and music questions. Yeah. Um. So much good music in my life uh, was brought to me by Keith, and was often brought to me by Keith, linking me the most junked up shit you could imagine, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> ripped off a cassette on YouTube. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. You remember when um, we found that amazing album of like God Slovenian funk? Or where was yeah, that yeah. from? Yeah, yeah. So this isn't this is I know exactly what this is from because I that's where my mind went immediately. For years, one of my favorite YouTube channels has been Funked Up East, which is a YouTube channel that so all they do good. is find Soviet bloc music, like like vinyls, and rip the vinyls to their computer and then upload the full albums to um uh, to YouTube, some of my favorite music ever from there. I'm really bad at uh, remembering what they're titled because they're you know they tend to not be English and they're just like you know you know uh, Slovenian jazz player names. Um, but uh, I'll I'll while we're playing I'll sort of poke around for some of my favorites and also I can tell people uh, drifting feather drifting feather by it's drifting feather paradox right? yeah drifting can you, can feather you by some Par track names from drifting feather by paradox yeah sure uh, let's see I would actually find it it just it just uh, came to me uh, while I was looking drifting feather by Par this is this is this stuff is amazing uh, from 1971 genre jazz fusion folk avant garde jazz psychedelic. Uh, 
Malaguena is track one. Track two is Uncle Leo's Intimate Life. Uh, track three is Do You Have Fresh Eggs or In Mrs. Bronca's Backyard? Um, uh, B-side one, Drifting Feather. B-side two, Pete. B-side three, Grandma's Hen. And B-side four, Auntie's Chit Chat. This album is phenomenal. Drum drumless jazz is so weird, and there's just like really lush layer of castanets like holding up the rhythm section, and then that's it. It was amazing, amazing I, guitar, very kind of Spanish guitar too. I put very it cool. on as like a curio, and it was that it was that great moment, like when um, when a friend says, "Will you read my poetry?" and you say, "Sure," because you respect them as a friend, and then they send you the poetry, and you're like, "This is <laughs> fucking amazing." This, I didn't write it. These are professional musicians. No, no, no. But I mean that vibe of like yeah, getting something yeah. that you think is going to be a curio and suddenly being like, holy yeah. shit. Oh, I've gotten some of those for you. Like the uh, the, the South American psychedelic band. What is it? Oh, name again? yeah. The Radical Brazilian. The Radical um, Brazilian they are psychedelic called... band. Oh, it's something funny like the skeletons. Songs. <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, it's, um, Os Mutantes, yeah, the mutants. The mutants, right. The mutants. Um, yeah, holy shit. The yeah. mutants have my... Uh, what's the... How much um, music can we play before they... Um, mute it. Mute us? I don't know. I oh, well, then I won't. Be... Then I won't. Uh, but go on, go on your favorite music platform and search uh, Panis, uh, P-A-N-I-S, Et et circenses c i r c e n s e s by os mutantes o s m u t a n t e s. It's amazing. Um, and I read into these guys. They were part of like this Brazilian psychedelic radical movement that was like, um, uh, like anti-nationalist Brazilian uh, cool. uh psychedelia. Um, um. just amazing. Uh, uh, Nova Sinteza by Blue Effect. That's another funked up East album that I really like. And then there's another great guitar one that I'm, I'm going to, I'll figure it out and then I'll look for it. Uh, but don't forget about Rare Birds by The Bug Club. Very garage. It's sort of like um, 90s garage, but also it's kind of the strokesy, but it's also very Velvet Undergroundy. And the songwriting is very fun and funny uh, and good. Like better than a lot of you know lo-fi sort of warm uh like distorted vocal stuff tends to not have the strongest songwriting in the world because you sometimes can't hear it this <laughs> stuff has some of the strongest songwriting i've heard in a long time it's really good uh just listen to the first 10 tracks every other track is like a little spoken word goofy little Cute. thing so it's really just five tracks just listen to the first five tracks and then you'll be like oh this is the best album from last year probably you know what I was listening to in the radio, uh, on the radio, in the car today? I was no, listening to the uh, alternative station and they were playing American Idiot by Green Day. That song's yeah. good. <laughs> that song is good. Yeah, I had that on a CD. I would listen to that on the way to school in the morning when it's I was great. eight. You yeah. know, I was, I was a problem with a lot of Green Day is that uh, when I want them to just do an absolutely ripping guitar solo, they, yeah. ju they don't. <laughs> And um, I think that uh, I think that their album Dookie is like one of the best albums. I think it's I think it is like weirdly like despite Green Day having becoming like massively famous, they sort of dropped off by having like not a lot of good music in the last twenty five years. Yes, um, that album's like oh, it has it has wrapped around to somehow being underrated. Yes, uh, I would need to go listen to Dookie again. I listened to Basket Case and my whole brain lights up. I, I never had like uh, uh, an emo-y phase or no, listening to that kind of like um, pop punk or that kind of stuff. Um, pop punk, I had a little bit like like early, earlier than the pop punk that was popular in the mid 2000s. But, but it means that now I get to encounter it and every time it's on the radio, I'm like, hell yeah. Or I'm like, this sucks ass. <laughs> A lot of it sucks ass. The two, the two options. A lot of it really sucks ass. We made a big mistake with Blink-182. We did make a big mistake with Blink-182 and the way that he sings. Sylvie says Jack had got to indoctrinate you to emo. I will take any recommendation whatsoever. The, the biggest thing that doing Friends at the Table music has taught me is that I like basically any genre of music if I listen to it for long enough. I like the emo 
that is mo- more math rock than anything else. Like it's like math rock, but with like fun, sad lyrics. I don't like yelling and I don't like, I really don't like any time a band wants me to think like that they're scary. <laughs> 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 Unless it's a joke, but like, like <laughs> sad, like, sad spooky like makeup and screaming and oh, blood and i'm like this is goofy uh, it took me a long time to get so into corny. it but that i think but then the mu- the music also really tends to not be very good is the other half of it i i had um where we used to live in long beach there was this this absolutely extraordinary uh black metal pizza place um, called the Fourth Horseman, and it wow. was uh, like a uh, like a shock horror uh, venue uh, that also sold pizza. That was either showing on its it had four massive screens inside, and it either had like uh, uh, splatter horror, uh, uh, Dave, uh, John Carpenter movies, or nineteen yeah. sixties pornography playing now oh my god now okay here's the thing now this is where it starts to this is the whole this is where it starts to wrap back around though guar doesn't bug me like i can't even think of i'm so bad i can never remember the difference between like my chemical romance and my bloody valentine and all of those <laughs> and panic of the disco i don't know the difference between any of them uh so i don't know who is the one that is like um, doing music videos where I'm like I'm a demon rising from a grave and I'm gonna get you. Sylvie uh, says I'm going crazy. <laughs> Sylvie, yeah. are you in front of a microphone? We're just at the general <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> but when it wraps back around Guar, now that's like corny and goofy and weird in a way that I can get behind. Like <laughs> Sylvie says, "Give me like, five. Okay, we we gonna we gotta bring an expert in. <laughs> I don't like Guar very much. How do you feel about like Slipknot? Um, I don't like Slipknot's music, and I think that they take it too far. They're not doing cartoons. Again, I don't really like Gar's music, but their vibe I can get into. And their vibe is, I'm a fucked up guy. (laughs) Slipknot is like, their vibe is like, they might actually kill you. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I definitely know, I definitely know, like, music journalists who have, like, interviewed Slipknot, and Slipknot is, like, actively threatening to hurt them. And I'm like, that doesn't seem fun or funny or cool. This seems a little beyond the pale as far as you're concerned. Yeah, I think, was yeah. the bit that made chat have an aneurysm when you said that you didn't know the difference between my chemical romance yeah. and my I don't know the difference between any of this. I just can't keep them straight in my head. Like, I can't keep the... It's not the music. I just literally don't know which... I mean, it's a little bit also the music. I don't know which name goes to which band. Goes to which guy. Right, right, right. right. Well, this is something that I... Uh, you know, when I got into um, Godspeed You Black Emperor, uh, I was so amazed that that's what that band name sounded like. I thought they were going to sound very different than how they sounded. I feel the, I feel the same way. I avoided them for a long time because I thought that they were going to sound um, like screamy. But they My friend. The opposite of that. You're here to talk about, I'm here to talk about the screaming music. Okay. The sc- is this what is, is that what Keith said? I don't like the screaming I don't, music? I don't like no. when... I don't like screaming in music... Like, I don't like the, there's two kinds that I don't yeah. like. I don't like the pig squealing. I I really dislike uh-huh. that. I don't like that at all. Um, like, uh, Jack, do you know what I'm talking about? With of the course pig squealing? I do. Okay. Um, I just got to make sure for the, and then I don't, I also don't like the, like. Like low. Uh, the, the lower version of that. Like the uh-huh. pig squealing, like, it's like, Rah! Like that. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. Like, the thing is, he can make any sound. I really don't like that either. <laughs> They're called false chord screaming. It's called false chord screaming. And I don't like, yeah, I don't like, I, I don't like false chord screaming. Are they both false chord screaming? Uh, I think that's technically the Because they come from the same place in the throat. False, yeah, false chord, to my same understanding, thing. is making like a. F- I mean, like you're doing like a false vocal cord thing, so you're not actually dam- you're not using your actual vocal cords to make the sound, is how it's been explained to me. Oh, that's I so can't cool. do this. I've tried to learn. Um, if I, I am also just ingrained in the local screamo scene okay. here, so you know, I got, I got, I got experience. I should have okay, so Sylvie, you were you were getting ready and may not might not have heard this. Yeah, it's not so much that. 
I don't I can't tell the difference between the music between My Chemical Romance and My Bloody Valentine and it's the names. Panic at the Disco. It's that I don't know any of them well enough to know which name goes to which thing. Okay. I think My Chemical Romance out of I mean My Bloody Valentine I also right, think would th- be into but My Chemical Romance are like just kind it's of just the names of the queen. <laughs> yeah, the name Okay, I have a good story about this actually. Um, I'm so glad and, that we brought out a special correspondent. Yeah, I, I'm, just, I'm glad I was fucking around on a Saturday and saw that the stream was going on. Um, I, uh, in college, I remember talking to my friend for like, my friend Matt and I were driving somewhere and having like a half hour conversation about music that mostly revolved around My Bloody Valentine that I got mixed up with the uh, metalcore band Bullet for My Valentine. So we were having oh, a conversation. That's another one that I also don't know the difference. About two different bands that just kept going until I said something about like, yeah, the vocals are really, I, I like the songs, but the vocals are really hard for me to do myself. And he was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so it's just singing, I think. Yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you know, in, it's, anyone can do a Cocteau Twins impression. It's basically that. Oh, man, the Cocteau Twins rule. Oh, Sorry. yeah. <coughs> Which one is just singing? Um, My Bloody My Valentine. Bloody Valentine. I'm wearing a My Bloody Valentine t-shirt right now, actually. This is very even serendipitous. Um, I think that Panic at the Disco is my least favorite one. I don't like Panic at the Disco. Panic I the think Disco Brendan stuck. Urie's a hack. Oh, Brendan yeah, Urie's the he, worst. I think that he's the worst, and I don't like his voice, and I don't like anything that... I've ever heard of him. Um, um, the f- and then the first Panic at the Disco album is a huge guilty pleasure for me. Um, that was before Bri- Brendan Yuri was writing most of the music too, though. Oh, oh I should check that out. Um, what a creative it's... coup! <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it was like they did that album. They did a weird Sgt. Pepper aesthetic ripoff album afterwards, and then. Uh, I believe it was the lead guitarist left, and then slowly everybody else left, and now it's just Brendan Urie. Um, who is the worst? Is he like an um, unpleasant dude as well as a bad songwriter? Um, I've never heard anything good. Sure. <laughs> right yeah. I don't have like specific like here. Here's this horrible thing he's done. Oh hi. Um. Who's hey Dre? Oh, oh hi Dre. Dre. <laughs> Dre briefly oh. appeared. He, he, they heard we were talking about uh, Brendan Yuri. Um, summons to talk about Brendan. My Yuri. Uh, my friends in high school, we were. I had a very musical group of friends. Everyone played. We were we were all multi instrumentalists who liked a lot of similar music. But there was a cohort. Uh, I would say not a cohort. I was I was the cohort that wasn't into it. Yeah, uh, but they they all had this like. Um, emo screamo a death metal splinter that i was like not i couldn't follow along with so i know a lot of these bands mostly as like the thing that my friends would play in the guitar while i would wait for them to like put bela fleck back on <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't know i i'm trying to think of like stuff with harsh vocals which is another just broad term for false chords um, that you would enjoy and I'm like, I, I, guess I, don't I know like what the, yelling in songs, yeah. you know, that, but it's yeah. the screaming that I don't love. Um, Why do you think uh, you don't love it? What What is sort of holding you there's back a from harsh, it? There's a, okay, I think it's two things. I think there's a harshness to it. Like, I don't think it sounds nice. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'm no, I'm no stranger to, you know, uh, discordant sounds or avant-garde sounds but and so that's how i feel like well i like that other kind of stuff so i really must not like this screaming thing for me to like not like it based on that it doesn't sound nice and then the other thing is the uh there's a lot of like theater and drama to the like darkness and depression of it and the woe is me of it and as a pretty depressed person I don't just don't empathize or I not empathize. I don't identify with that kind of mm-hmm. showing like uh uh I'm depressed in a different way than these guys are depressed. Sure, sure. <laughs> and and so when they're like when they're doing their thing and do putting on putting on their depression show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just like I can't follow you. I don't have 
you know, like my problems yeah. don't resonate with whatever this guy's problem is. Sure. That's. Yeah, I feel that. Um, Which is to say that I don't hook in on the emotion of it. I like when I'm here, when I'm when they're doing the emotional thing that a lot of people are identifying with. It's like doing something actively that I don't identify with. That makes sense. I think that's yeah, that as, that's as sense. good a reason as any not to you know not to latch on to a to a kind of style. Yeah, I think I was put off for a long time because I didn't realize quite the extent to which I was put off for two reasons. Right, um, I was off put by the harshness, by the sort of the dissonance, uh, and then eventually I just sort of got to a point where I was like. Mm, like like when your ear clicks with a thing and that doesn't bother you bother you anymore like mm -hmm. when you hear people go around the chords enough times in jazz and you're like ah I, I see how it goes mm -hmm. um and then i didn't realize that and, and you know there are definitely instances i'm thinking of like norwegian black metal and stuff where where it is not kayfabe um but realizing the kind of uh, different facets of kayfabe going on kind of really endeared me to it. Um, right, yeah. And, you know, knowing a lot of death metal and black metal and doom metal, people who have just been the nicest people I know, and there is something so uh, joyful about being like, these fucking weirdies, man, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. I do get I do... I mean, obviously not fully, but I do, like, understand what people identify with like um but um yeah i don't know i just i can't i can't get around like you know my depression is so much more bare bone like it's so much more bread and butter than the um, what if, like, how would you feel if instead of singing about depression they were singing about like the worm in the black tower <laughs> it depends oh, on I how have, they were have, singing have, about I, it i have that band Oh, the worm in the black tower. Who's the uh, who's the worm in the black tower? Literally, death consciousness has a. I mean, they're not really black metal. They're more on the like emo side of things. But yeah. they have a. They're they're have a nice life. The album Death Consciousness starts with the song called "A Quick One Before the Eternal Worm Devours Us All." Whoa. <laughs> and I like that album a lot. You love to see it. Um, I like it whenever they sing about a wizard. I like it whenever they sing about like the death bell. Oh, that tolls. you should get into prog metal. Uh, yeah, you should I mean, listen to some Dreadnought. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Uh, Dreadnought is my series we can't name on the Patreon thing we can't talk about uh, music. Oh, hell yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, 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 the people are called Dreadnought. D-R-E-A-D-N-A-U-G-H-T. Yeah, the band is called Dreadnought. Um, Dreadnoughtdenver.bandcamp.com. Bridging Realms is the album that I really like by them. Um, I'm going to look this up. Dreadnought. That's got a um, that's got a mix of harsh and clean vocals too, which I know a lot of people. I mean, personally, that helped me get into harsh vocal stuff too. Was having a mix. Uh, um, what I should say also, what I should add to this to cover my bases, because um, the, this is always sound. This is something that I've learned always exists in all things, in all media, in food, in drinks, everything. Uh, my experience with the genre besides my friends in high school who were listening to other stuff um, that I can't remember, but it's also uh -huh. been forever. It's been 14, 13 years, something like that. Um, most of my experience comes from the most popular and most mainstream things oh, in the sure. genre, which means yeah. that it's probably also the worst stuff that it has to offer. And so mo most of my negative feelings come from the most popular things and the same thing happened to me with country music the same thing happened to me with alcohol the same thing happened <laughs> to me with you know endless things where i was like judging things based on what most people were listening to or mm -hmm. experiencing and then being like oh that stuff was all garbage the good stuff is somewhere oh, else uh, yeah no listen i this is all this was also my experience with the music I am most obsessed with now for yeah. a long time. And, and it makes sense because uh, you have to go back decades to find like my favorite stuff being played on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Or on the, on the big radio stations. I don't know. Like sometimes I listen to the radio and I'm like, Oh, wait a second. 
Oh, I'm the big thing for me forever ago that I feel like you both are probably also tuned into was when KEXP would do a bunch of sets and put them on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I don't know where KEXP is even based. I think it's Seattle. No, I have no idea what this is. Um, it, it's just a radio station that, like, for a while, it just is, would yeah. put on. Okay, yeah, they'd put on, like, live performances of, like, up and coming bands or like like they get stuff like like I'm looking at it now like they put up a one by Wilco a month ago too but like I remember listening to oh I think did they Dilly Dally did a set on here which is was a Toronto band that broke up pretty recently that are pretty good um there's so many just like I feel like there's like a bunch of the like um like Don Giovanni adjacent punk stuff too um, I found, I listened to on there. Um, now I'm just naming. Man, like, I'm so I am. So, <laughs> I want to just. God. I yeah, mean, I apologize for derailing your war. Stream. Oh no, you. No, no, we, we 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 always do start a with a podcast. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just and in that's the middle. Part of it. Um. Yeah. I. I. It I it just it literally just makes me want to create a few burner Twitch accounts and DJ, <laughs> you know, it just yeah. Oh yeah, I I mourn the days of the fucking like I can't even remember the name of it. Um, the the like the website DJ where you room could... website. Yeah, 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 where you could be like yeah. a little guy in the room. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I think that mythologizing periods of the internet in the past is always dangerous and it, it of often course. doesn't speak to you know the way the history of the internet works but let me tell you there was some there was some stuff on the internet and the way the internet worked a decade ago 15 years ago that ruled <laughs> oh yeah this is the thing it's like it's like when I, it's like how uh people who were alive in like the late 80s and conscious of it talk about malls and stuff yeah yeah like i never experienced malls like that but i did experience neopets when flash was still a thing oh my god remember flash the other day um janine it. and kb and i were hanging out and we just started going onto like those um archives of flash games that are using you know uh whatever tools are being used to emulate flash we were just playing these like busted flash games from you know 2008 it was great Oh, uh, you play Fancy Pants Adventure? I didn't play Fancy Pants Adventure. We, Damn. we played that one that was like, um, God, it was like a sort of almost like a Trials style bike game, except oh, it was like really sick Happy and Wheels? twisted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Happy yeah. Wheels. Happy Wheels had a grip on my fucking high school. And, and like, like all your arms and legs would yeah. fall off if you hit something too hard. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, there was that, and then there was one that would be terrible for streaming, but I remember like a fully fledged like rpg series about a zombie called sunny that i used to play a ton Whoa. on the internet yeah yeah yeah. there were two of them and they're never making that third one sick oh well, i am getting a phone call sunny i'll be right back okay uh i didn't I, I i didn't ever get too deep into flash games i used to go to addictinggames.com and play the games that you could only play for a few minutes at the library at school why could you only play them for a few minutes oh just because you, uh the games are only designed to hold your attention for a few minutes, and then also I was at the library at school, so I didn't have very much time. Oh yeah, sure. Um, but I was like, I was I was lucky to have video game consoles very early, and so I had access to not just playing Flash video games. Man, you know, I, I hear it said a lot, and I'm so curious if it's anecdotal or if it's actually the case, but it makes me so sad when people say that kids nowadays don't know how to pirate shit. Oh, it's definitely not anecdotal, and it's very sad. Oh, it's so sad. Uh, as a proud stealer of everything that you can steal <laughs> online, <laughs> um, it is like so much harder than it used to be even to find things like it used to be so easy to find because people usually just have a server with all their stuff up you know seating and now it's like hard to find things like it's hard to unless it's like the most popular stuff go back further than a few years and it's really hard to find um like music especially is really really hard to find 
because there's not a there's not an audience for it. No. So people are like, what am I doing? Why am I still uh Handle. why am I still seeding this collection of of uh, you know Daniel Johnston's discography? It's, uh, are we talking about torrenting now? We're talking about yeah. how kids apparently don't know how to pirate nowadays. Oh, kids, have, kids have abandoned torrenting, and so it's it's getting rarer. It's getting harder to find things that aren't like the most popular. That thing. is true. Yeah. Um, we're losing recipes. It's getting a little. I think it's getting a little better for. Although one of the big streaming sites like went down last year, and it was tragic. Um, but. Uh, I think it's getting a little bit better for for TV shows and movies because of how bad streaming is getting for everyone. So I think people are yeah. like, "Hey, I've 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 remembered this lost art called pirating. Have you heard of it? You can just download. <laughs> you can just download it, and then you have it, and you don't have to pay for it. Um, uh, and you don't. It doesn't have to buffer. Uh, it doesn't have to buffer. It's just that. That's the it's huge just, thing. I mean, um, I tell you what is one step better is getting a Blu-ray from the library and it has no compression. That's just, you know, or I mean, it has Blu-ray compression, but it has no. But, you know, doesn't have any of the like uh, okay. encoding shit. Now, here's here's what I, I mean. You go to the library. You do all the library stuff that you want. I encourage everybody to go to the library. Um, but you could go, you could get a bunch of blank Blu-rays. Yeah, and yeah. Blu-rays are Blu-rays are too big to keep on your computer even if even with like uh you know, let's say that I had a 26 terabyte Plex server in the other room. Uh, -huh. uh it's just still too big to put like a bunch of 4K movies on there. But get get a Blu-ray, get blank Blu-rays and get like a $70 Blu-ray burner Download them, burn them onto Blu-rays. Get it for five bucks. You can get a stack of blank Blu-ray cases, and then just like burn a Blu-ray library. And while we're at, while we're just giving tips, check out Soulseek. Soulseek is a good way to find music. <laughs> oh, I know about Soulseek. I haven't used it. I have only used it a little. I mostly my friends use it, but it seems solid. Um, there's a forum that I can't remember the name of right now that I use a lot that is like, it's just like a bunch of user created lists of bands and music. Why am I blanking on oh, the name of this? That's I, what I use. Can I give a very specific shout out just to bring things back to the, the, the Screamo conversation? But oh yeah, -related. absolutely. There is a blog spot that is responsible for so much of my musical taste and it's called Sophie's Floorboard. Uh, it is super famous to like a certain subset of like late 20s emos, but also none of the like younger people I talk to at shows have heard about it. So I feel like I'm giving them like a secret like archive Ooh, of good shit. That's so wow. good. That's um, great. Also, she, I think it's still up. Quote unquote records dot com was a big thing for me, which was Jeff Rosenstock's like free um, like pay what you want record label before or at least maybe not before Bandcamp, but at least before the zeitgeist of Bandcamp hit um and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff still on there i think he still releases his current stuff on there too uh rate your music that was this that was the place i couldn't remember the name of Rate your music hmm. it's not it's not an unknown site it's very well known i think there's a lot of lists there that are good rate to your music? scroll through yeah well, rate um, your music is super famous yeah 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 but that's what i, I if i'm not going what my favorite thing to do is to just go on Bandcamp and just listen to 45 or 50 things in a row, just like a minute each. And then like, maybe I'll get one hit, maybe. But I don't feel like I'm, I feel like it's very thorough. You know, you set it up, you go, you you put your filters on however you want, genre. I like genres, new arrivals, and then to sort by uh, someone who has like a physical copy of something. Cause I'm like, okay. It'll, 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 I'll throw out some wheat, but it will definitely <laughs> throw out all the chaff. Uh, and uh, not all the chaff, it'll throw out a lot of chaff. So it's like an imperfect system. And then I'm just like, all right, I'll just gonna listen to 30 seconds of everything since the last time I did this. It's um, great. A game I yeah. really want to play is uh, go to the library and without looking at what I'm doing, just select a CD from the massive uh, library of CDs and take it home and just be like, what the fuck have I got here? Um, 
that's great. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Black Metal in general because I was just on uh, Bandcamp, just like scrolling idly. I haven't listened to this. I can't speak to the quality of it. Here's an album called Covenant of the Blackened Woodlands by Ithilra. Let me just read you these song titles. Track one is called Relic. Track two is called Frigid Wanderess. Track three is called Covenant of the Blackened Woodlands. Track four is called Hatred in Solitude. Track five is called Frenzied Nocturnal Spirit. It's six minutes long. And track six is called Woodland Lord. <laughs> wow. I love that. It's great. Um, we should we should we should convene to play Crusader Kings. Um Sylvie, we should. you are more than welcome to stay. You also don't yeah. have to stay if you had other plans this evening. Well, I'll stay for a little while. Uh, are you, yeah, do you want to take to over date, hungry? Are you in yeah, how up to date are you in Crusader Kings? Um I of the streams or the video games? Uh, the streams. Mm, I'm sorry, friends. I'm not up to date at all. Okay, here is um, the one sentence summary, and we will use one sentence. Jesus Christ, it's not going to happen. Okay, this is the. I believe in you. This is a uh, one in one sentence. Try it. Our current ruler was the former duke of a small province in the Holy Roman Empire. Who? Comma. Actually, he was a count. Sorry, comma. Who, comma, through good luck and circumstance, has risen to an exceptionally high position and has been gifted the opportunity to invade Hungary by the Pope. Okay. I like that Hungary sort of shaped and colored like a brain here. Yeah. Who he met only one time. <laughs> he liked the cut of his jib. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was we found God in a cave and it gave us so much likely place for him to be. <laughs> <laughs> we found so much piety uh, as a mm -hmm. result that we immediately traded it in. We also I should say by the way is the is the is the video up for the people? The video is uh oh on the stream. Yeah. Last I looked, it was it was up. Um I also have to step away for another couple minutes. Okay. Apologies. No, no, that's okay. Um, yeah, Sorry, I, think, I think it's fine. It just was black for me for some reason. It said it, we were offline, even though everyone was chatting and responding to us. So no, no, the videos, the video is up. Um, Great. You can see that we. Now let's see. We have kind of. Let me see. I want to see Alsace because where is Alsace right now? It only it's... looks like we run this place and this place, but we definitely own more than that, right, Keith? No, we totally don't. That's it. <laughs> we are just one of the most powerful people in the Holy Roman Empire. Are are we? I don't know that we are. We're one of the luckiest. I think that we've been very lucky. Um, I, And you know, what it, you know what else? I think that we've spent a lot of time more zoomed in than you are right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Go, go, go lower. Because we also have, we also have um, uh, the islands, our island. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, right. down here. Yes, yeah, totally. Just so that we're not, we, we, you know, we all, we have our minds. You know, we sort of have up here. Although in the last stream, we uh, sort of, we gave up this seat as, as our home and moved down here. Uh, uh, where we are, I think, currently on a little pilgrimage. <laughs> what are we doing? We're traveling. Um... You're away from capital. Why are we away from the capital? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, we're, we're traveling. I don't. I. I don't. I don't super know why. Maybe it was for a wedding. Oh, maybe. Maybe it was for a wedding. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, we'll deal with that in a second. I got so thrown by uh, by uh, talking about music and had such a great time talking about music that I'm like, shit, we got to play Crusader Kings now. Oh yeah. Um, Keith, something I have noticed, as pointed out in the chat, is, you know Hungary up here? Yeah, I know about it. Have you heard about Hungary 2? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that we talked about this because they were at, they were at, they were at war. <laughs> and, and so basically what's going to happen, because we talked, we, we talked about this because it's, it's sometimes it's hard to predict how things are going to shake out because of how weird the laws and stuff are. And we wanted Hungary to lose this war because what's going to happen is you see he has two king titles. He has the king of Hungary and whatever the other place is that he's king of right now. Uh, Ruthenia. 
Ruthenia. So when we take over Hungary, he's going to lose the King of Hungary title and all of his internal Hungary titles and then become King of Ruthenia, which means that we are going to have we're going to be neighbors with a guy whose <laughs> kingdom we took. I'm planning so on we killing were... him. Oh, OK, well, then it's fine. Um, <laughs> no, because his children, his heirs will have a strong claim or a weak that's sorry, true a weak claim a weak claim his kids will have a weak claim i think that's true and i mean uh, killing him is going to be tricky or rather going to war is going to be tricky in the first place but um uh, it's worth it's worth a shot trifemia says you're playing a sardinia weirdly no we're playing as alsace no. but uh due to a bizarre loophole in how uh uh <laughs> holy roman empire succession worked we immediately invaded sardinia um so we, so they enacted a law they enacted a law so first of all we had our sights set on sardinia because um there's a mine there that gives a bunch of money and we were broke and we needed money to fund our war machine we did. And that's all working out. We're in the process of like rebuilding our, our filling, refilling our coffers. Um, and it, it lucked, it worked out because while we were focused on uh, Sardinia and Corsica, um, the Holy Roman Empire enacted a law that I don't think it had enacted before, which is that you cannot wage internal war right now. <laughs> and and Corsica and Sardinia were like right outside the bounds of the Holy Roman Empire and one of the last places that we could easily take over. So from, we did. Uh, so we did. <laughs> so we continued oh. to do. Uh, so what is notable, Sylvie, is uh, our goal that we've been setting up for a very long time is we want to invade and take Hungary. That is to say, yes. this. The, the the nearby chunk of Hungary, not the sort of splinter. I mean, ideally both. Over by mini Poland. Yeah, yeah, mini Poland. Uh, however, this is not part of the kingdom of... Oh, I don't know. It's hard to say what will happen, honestly. Because if I go to war with this guy right now, you can see that uh, the only bit that is highlighted is this bit. But it's very likely that that will also include this bit. Holy yeah. shit, Hungary 3? Yo. <laughs> There's I'm more Hungaries than Peggles. I'm pretty <laughs> confident in my analysis that that Hungary too will just become Ruthenia okay. when we when we win. Sure. Now we've been thinking about this a lot, Sylvie, and p part of our goal is that we have we have developed what is by Crusader King standards a really incredible monthly income. Um, we are making eleven gold a month. Um, okay, because I saw the army thing and I was going to ask how you guys were doing for maybe mercenary yeah, hiring. Yeah, so that is part of it. The The other thing that is that is really interesting that we've sort of established is that this guy's primary ally is Kaiser Heinrich of the Holy Roman Empire. He's our boss. Um, oh. And he's our ally too. And he won't go to war. Uh, no, he will not. With... He, uh, uh, he's not our ally, but he is our leech. You guys are in a mob movie. We, this is the dawn of the families trying to pit the two smaller families against each other. I know. We, we, our theory, right, is that he won't go to, he won't join the war. So his actual war score is fourteen thousand four hundred fifty-one minus eight thousand. Okay. So which is about um, six thousand people. And yours isn't minus eight thousand, right? Uh, no, no, <laughs> okay. no, no. Just to be I, clear, I don't think so. I think that we have, we can bring in a total of eight thousand soldiers. What we can't do is afford this war, but neither can he. So if we could very quickly make some money, then we could we could effectively, even if we're evenly matched, we can outspend, which is really important. Yeah, I mean, because we're going you know, you to be can't... making constantly money, constantly, right? Yes, yeah. Um, so I think that what we should do right now is we should try and marry off because we have eligible family members. We should take whatever pittance of an alliance we can get. Of alliance, that Crusader Kings I missed. <laughs> we have family family members that can get married. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, right, Our twenty eight year old son can be married in a. Uh, uh, in a we oh, we were talking about this before. We can we can matrilineally marry our third oh, line yeah. son. He's a very valuable matrilineal marriage that will get us uh better 
um, uh, it'll get us a better oh. pairing and maybe a strong. Ooh, blackmail! Did we try and did we try and kill Countess Georgia? Uh, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is is Duke Gerhard a very murdery type? Like, are you um, role playing Gerhard at all here? Uh, he's a, he's uh he has just an absolute mass of sexually transmitted diseases. That's okay. his sort of main. Well, then that means my man. <laughs> Sorry, she's a spineless villain. Did we try and kill this lady? I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. It's been three months since we last played it. Who knows if that's even when that happened? What happens if I decline it? She exposes that we uh, that we. It's bad. Murder. We should we should let her blackmail us. Okay, fine. Me, wait, wait, wait. We wait, can wait, always wait, wait, kill her. Yeah, let me just. Oh, she has a strong hook on us, so we can't actually kill her. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay, we should start marrying some of our family members off, right? Yeah, so let's take. Can we take a quick look at our son? This son? Um, this is a pretty good son. <laughs> this, uh, is our third, this is our steward. Oh, so we don't actually want to lose our steward. No. Uh, but let's see what kind of alliance power we can get. So we could. We could. No, he's twenty-eight. Not, We're not we going to marry him to our three-year-old three -year <laughs> granddaughter. This game's sick, by the way. We're so not going to marry him to Dag Fastest. Uh, who's 61. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Dag Fastison, though. What a name. <laughs> who? Oh, um, shit. He has a mercenary company. Okay. Mm. That's 2,000 soldiers. Dag, I don't know. The next best is Infante Aramun Gartiziez of Navarra. Uh, 1,000 soldiers. And there's a bunch of claims. Dag might be the play. Dag might be the play. <laughs> but, uh, uh, son, you're gay, right? <laughs> no, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, you better start acting like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, we want to throw a grand wedding? No. Matrilineal no. marriage? No. 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 Okay. We'll accept. Look at him rubbing his little hands together, you fucking creep. Okay, so we married him, Grundin, <laughs> to the charming Gerhard. Great. Cool. Great. Lovely. Um, alliance power. Not again? No. Um, Who's your heir currently? Uh, our Is heir... it the guy you just married off? No, no, no that was no. our third in line. Oh, it's okay. a woman called Heilvig. Who is married to the Duke? Oh, we, Duke Herman of Corinthia. We don't want. Okay. We don't want it to be her. Okay. I think we want it to be our second son. What Anno, the guy we just married to? Death. Oh, oh, that's our second son. Oh, okay, so maybe it was our third son that we want. There was one person who had better stats than everyone. Well, let's see. She. Uh... Oh wait, shit! Agnes has died. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay. Decision available, visit a brothel. That's always good. Uh, it's all go here, Sylvie, really. Yeah, no, no, it's perfect. Um, I this think is where I wish that I could, like, load in, like, a new, like, Crusader Kings game in the middle of this type of shit always. Yes. I don't want to get, I don't want to work up to it. I just want to be here for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ooh. You can do that. That's actually how the game starts. Really? I haven't played a lot of three. So I like got three you... when it came out, and then in Paradox uh, fashion, it wasn't one. finished. I haven't played one, but in two and three, the main way to start is just to click on a leader anywhere at any level oh, yeah. and take over for them at that moment. And the, the Ireland strategy was a big thing in CK2, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and they actually made it the tutorial in three, wow. which, is, which is great. I think we should marry Grundin to Adelaide. Adelaide Ludo Winger. Uh, it also, by the way, it is extremely fun to like start in the 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 south of Ireland, take over all of Ireland, and then have Ireland conquer England. Oh my God, my ancestors <laughs> are singing just at the idea. It's great. It's really fun. <laughs> um. Okay, this will give us an alliance with Count Ludwig of Olamund. That would be pretty good. Uh, about a thousand soldiers. Yeah, that's not bad. 
Okay. Ludwig also just a classic count name too. Oh, a classic count. Classic name. count name. And then Hernman, who is uh, nineteen. <laughs> we could marry to. Uh, this is all too grim for me. Uh, Dietrich, <laughs> Dietrich, Dietrich, Dietrich Zun Flammers. <laughs> of, he's of Flammers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we're good for alliances right now if these things <laughs> yeah, come we're good. through. We're good, uh, we're good. We could ask the Pope for gold. And he will accept. Oh my god, 227 gold! <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, That's I'm still not... dying from that. We still have an own big problem name from that kid. <laughs> we should do it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He loses yeah, no. 20 opinion of us. We sp He likes us a bunch. He likes us a bunch. We have a shit ton of piety. Time. He hated us, and then we went on one pilgrimage. And so he was like, a cave. this guy's all right. Maybe he should be king of Hungary. I mean, like, in my experience playing these games, I feel like opinion is easier to get back than money. Yeah, yes. oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, we're fucking ready to go. We're fucking ready to go. Oh, uh, should we go to the brothel first? What's our stress like? I mean, you know, that's I how Gerhard gets loose, right? It our truly stress is. is. Oh, perfect. our stress is perfect. Holy shit, Sylvie, you've come at just the right time. I'm a good omen. You are a good I'm omen. I'm here to sound the, the horns of war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the county control here, we have our marshal kind of like getting the county back under control after we invaded them. And when we do that, we will get even more gold. You see how much this is going up? Oh my this God. is how we're going to this, my friends is how we are going to We're too big to fail. <laughs> um, what we should do, we should take a look at our council right now and make sure that our, um, I know that we want to keep getting more gold uh, and there's 11, 11 months left there, but we should maybe start training commanders. <sighs> because once the war goes on, we've got to switch to organized army because that is way cheaper. You're right. I do sort of want to get going, but yeah, he's disrupting schemes. That's good. Let's train these commanders. Oh, it's a, there's 11 months left. What do you think? It's not going to restart. It's just going to oh, slow okay. back down. Cool. Uh, what do we got here? Foreign affairs, domestic affairs. I want... In very Crusader Kings fashion, that stuff is all... Um always progressing oh um, yeah sure so like it's not a flip that switches after you know two years it'll just be like increased rate while she's focused on that yes yeah 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 um okay i'm gonna get a glass of water <laughs> but i'm gonna pause the game and i will be right back oh yeah you gotta be hydrated if you want to take over hungry i took a bite of food Oh, we're you were conquering Hungary in a different way. Yeah, we're sorry, we're you're, you're hungry. I was conquering Hungary. Yeah, I'm also conquering Hungary. You know, it's yeah. the time of the day. Um, Sylvie, yes, uh, you weren't on the call yet, but the reason that we were talking about music was because I was recommending that people listen to uh, uh, "Rare Birds" by the Bug Club. Yeah, I heard you talking about that. I was watching for that. So um, you, I, I need okay. to. Oh, that you're listen. watching, but not in here. Yeah. I'm. Uh, it's what I've been listening to for three days. I'm in love with it. It's a blast. I love the name. Just all of it. Like I know. Yeah, Rare Birds Hour of Song by the Bug Club. I need to listen to the one that I haven't listened to yet. Is let's see, which what is it called? Uh, we've got so many things. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. There. Anyways, Holy Spirits perform One Foot in Bethlehem. That is their, they did a live album, but as a different band. And so it's all bespoke songs. Oh, I love just that. For this live album. <laughs> and, and, and where they're not playing as, they're playing as the Bug Club as Mr. Anyways, Holy Spirits. Mr. Anyways, Holy Spirits is um, an impeccable name. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why yet, but H O L E Y for holy. Well, you know why not? Yeah, why not? They've been perforated. Oh, they've been perforated. Yeah, clearly. Um. But yeah, I was. Uh, I'm. I'm doing music stuff all all week because I'm messing with Plex amp to get. 
mm. all my music going in a better music player than the yes, regular. Have you been liking that? Player. I need I need a a good like local music player on my. I like right now I just have local files in Spotify on my phone and it's not good. Yeah, I I I like it so far. I'm not like it just feels like because I'm streaming it from my Plex, so they're not local, but you can download whatever you mm -hmm. want. So in that way, it's like YouTube Music, which also lets you upload your own library and then download it okay. wherever you want. Um, but so I guess it's actually more limited because uh, uh, it doesn't have any streaming stuff. It just it's has okay. my, but I've already got, you know, I pay for YouTube Music because I like it. It's the streaming service that I like. Mm -hmm. And also it gets you no youtube ads for free yeah see that's like as a I bonus should, i should maybe get on that uh there's i cannot tell you for me how much how much i don't care about using spotify and then <laughs> switching to spotify would make me have to watch youtube ads that's oh, crazy that's, yeah that's that's just like yeah <laughs> like i just like never in a million years uh but yeah plex amp seems like a really good alternative as a built-in nice. view that you can set um it's uh it's got access to uh like a huge database of um preset eqs that are set by like um doing like weird measurements on the headphones and so you can search oh. for your headphone oh you. <laughs> a lot of that stuff i don't i don't know how it got started but i know the youtube headphone reviewer guy critical is involved because a bunch of the measurements and eqs come from his stuff i don't really know who he is i do have two pairs of his like collab headphones um, because he did he did a couple collabs to make really cheap um, in-ear headphones and they're really good um, uh, but that's all I know him from and from the EQs that I use uh, but I already was using this service to help EQ my headphones and so when I saw that this stuff was built into Plex Amp I was like oh that's great I could just search for the one I was already using so I have to check that, that out I, I I'm all, I you two already extolled the uh, the the praises of the Plex uh, venture as a whole, but love Is that it shit. You two, the band you two. You no, the two of you. Don't get me started oh. about Bono. <laughs> hey, real quick, one 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 sentence. Otherwise, yeah. we will make another podcast. And I love to make a podcast with my friends, mm -hmm. but I do feel yeah. guilty for the people out here who are like Crusader Kings. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is you two good? Do I've never heard. No, any you two's terrible. Do they have any merit? U2 is no, terrible, and my mom they, knew Bono when they were kids. <laughs> they actually have less merit than they are good. So they're like even less, like, however how, how bad they are, their merit is even lower. Uh, yeah. Did I get a glass of water? No. Yes. Did, you? did you? Oh, uh, no. What'd you get? Did, you like did I get a gin and tonic? <laughs> Ooh. Ah, it's, the thinker is water. It's the war season. Okay, so I'm. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> water. Uh, I'm very lucky. Uh, uh, in Rhode Island, there's a local um, distillery called Rhodium. I recommend people check it out. Uh, they make gins and vodkas and a couple other things. It's the best gin I've ever had. <laughs> it's so good. People who like to order gin online should go order some gin from Rhodium. Oh, it's that's down great. the street from me, and they're fantastic. They're like regular gin is like the gin that i would give to someone who's like oh i don't like gin and i would go like oh well here's rhodium's regular gin and i think that people would be like oh i like gin now <laughs> <laughs> okay here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna make a save because this is going to suck um i think that uh, what is going to happen is the war is going to be difficult, but we are going to win, and then literally all hell is going to break loose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, the repercussions of your actions will come yes. to visit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that is worth letting you know, Sylvie, is that we have um, a bunch of knights, and you can see their kind of their military uh, prowess here, represented by this number. Um, and our main knight is our wife. <laughs> uh, oh, let's go! She has a sort of she's she is. She's very good at martial, and as a sort of individual knight, what do they call it, prowess? She's pretty good. She's she's average, but she is a a good like soldier. 
<laughs> um, now, you might think maybe we should get our wife out of uh, uh, the front lines. And in fact, we could do this Why? with any other... <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that? With any other knight? But this isn't just any knight. She is an acclaimed knight called the Terror in the Plains. Yo? Yep. Yep. Damn, you guys got a real baddie over here. I know. She, she has an absolute ton of um, syphilis. Um, <laughs> we gave it to her and she was not happy. Okay, well, like, lead with that. Lead with that you gave it to her. <laughs> We're a medieval duke. We don't have to lead with that. It's understood. Uh, she did quiet. also kill our mother, I believe. No, that was our previous wife. And when she died, we actually got tooltips saying we are celebrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we really did not like our old wife. You guys are playing as Tony Soprano. Uh, I don't even know who we're, we're. Um, how old is this guy? He's fifty. Okay. Okay. Uh. Keith, I have a bad feeling, but we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Is your feeling that he's gonna die from non-war-related causes during the war? That is my bad feeling. Yeah, because uh, I immediately no. went to that too when I saw no, that news age. We're fine, we're healthy. Um, we, um, so you guys are in charge of the Holy Roman Empire, or like is a specific no, region no, in we're here? We're a minor no, duke. So That's what I thought. But yeah. you guys were talking about Holy Roman Empire going to war with Hungary before this, so I was no, like, no, no, oh, okay, we are Alsace. That's us. Oh, speaking, oh, okay. of our, speaking of our syphilis, uh, <laughs> can we can we check uh, and see, make sure that we have a nurse um, uh, uh, employed? Oh yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, remember to get to get tested, folks. It's important. A nurse for us or for children. Oh, sorry, for us, for us. Uh, we have a Dr. Abermine. Remember this guy? He's 71. He's like a he's like an Ashkenazi rabbi. He's great. Right, yes, Abermine. Um, I forgot about Abermine. He's fantastic. We have been in this character for so long, Sylvie, that we have basically like played out these amazing, uh, uh, you know, we hunted bears together. Hey, what the fuck is Friuli? <laughs> hey, let's get that. <laughs> we should have that. We can probably get Friuli, right? We have a claim because it's on the border of the... I don't know if we explained this, Sylvie, but like anything on the border of the HRE, at least at some point, we used to be yeah. able to have a claim on. Okay. Prince Archbishop Landolf of Friuli. <laughs> he thinks about content all the time. No, no, we can't go to war. He does look like a Twitch streamer. He does look like a Twitch While streamer. While we stream on Twitch, I guess, you know, <laughs> glass houses and all. No, none of us we, look like Twitch we, streamers. None of us look like not, it, no. We may not be able to declare war on a bishop. Uh, that might be the case. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, we should do this. We, we, we've been, you know, pussyfootying around. Mm -hmm. We gotta do it. How much money does this idiot have? This idiot has 165 money. How much money do we have? 407 money. Okay. Our idiot's got way more money. Our idiot's got way more money. Well, now, hold on. Now, hang on. Do we want to get a plan in motion to start killing some of his children? Um, I think, so he's almost definitely not going to die. I think it's more important to kill him than it is to kill his children. Okay. He's he's not very good, actually. I mean, he's all right. His, his he's martial is villain. terrible. He is he's a good godless with the sword. villain. He's good with the sword, this but is he's very bad way, this at is, military This thinking. is why the Pope was trying to pawn off his kingdom. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> we want the Kingdom of Hungary. That is our claim. Okay. 270 prestige. We have 1,108. We can afford yeah. this. This is going to be bad, but... We just saved, right? Yep. And this is what you tuned in for. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe that we really are ready to do this. Oh, we should stay paused while we're out of... Oh, I while thought... We're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's only in in one, so it's probably fine. Uh, we should also invite all of our army. 
We should invite all of our allies. Yep, and we should set this it's council cost. member to organize our army. Yeah, yeah, organize our army. It's going to cost prestige. But we should win it back by taking the Kingdom of Hungary. Right, yes, that is more prestigious. Okay. Um, oh, we might want to also switch our... Um, Look at our allegiances. <laughs> we might want to switch our, our spouse to... Um, war mode. To war mode, yeah. Spouse? Engage. War mode. Engage war mode. Uh, uh, chivalry. chivalry. Yeah. Spouse? God, look at her. She fucking rules. Duchess Adela. Um, what is, What's her deal? She's greedy. She's arbitrary. She's ambitious. She's a skilled tactician. She's a novice physician. She's a hunter. She's an aggressive attacker. She's a poet. She's shrewd. She has syphilis and she's traveled around. Cool. You are one holding above your domain limit. This is because we're at war, right, Keith? How does this work? Yeah, it must be. Oh, I know why. It's because we engaged war mode. Um, oh, yes, yes. We may want to. We may want to disengage because her stewardship gave us just enough overall stewardship why to increase. Disengage. Our, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Her okay. guns fold back into her body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Giguto in the chat says, Jack, Keith, what is happening? Well, Sylvie is here too. We have a special guest today. Uh, Sylvie Bullet has arrived. Uh, yeah, I'm here to help with the war. <laughs> war correspondent Sylvie Bullet, who we brought yeah. on to talk about Screamer. Uh, yeah, what else would you do with a war correspondent? <laughs> Uh, okay, it's like so, a whole thing in Dead Rising was Frank West. He's, I covered wars and I have opinions on the DC emotional hardcore scene. You know, uh, I have been line. thinking about replaying Dead Rising for weeks. Huh. Um, I love those games. The first one? All of them, really. Uh, Call to War. So this is going to cost 150 prestige. We can afford it. And he has shit tons of soldiers. Uh, he's going to bring in, I think, 3,000 soldiers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're bringing in uh, 1,500. So that's about... Uh, Which is close to 3,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over half? Over halfway there? Uh, that guy sucks. He has 400 soldiers. He will not be coming to help. This 15-year-old... Yeah. Uh, who is Duchess Rich Wara of Steiermark? She's Hello, cool asshole. as hell. Uh, she is going to come and go to war with us. Also, she is betrothed to one of our family members. I don't know who, but uh, good. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> right. Now, it's I don't know quite how many we have brought into the war. This guy has 7,000 soldiers. I'm just going to keep inviting people. Yeah. We have enough to invite a few more. Just want to make sure I'm bringing in the like most. Oh, he'll do. He's like a Viking. <laughs> okay, let's unpause this. Let this run slowly. Yeah, let's have them all accept, and then let's go into the war screen. Cool. Oh, this is very exciting. Okay, Herman has arrived. Gerhardt has arrived. We've swayed the. <laughs> All right, let's check. Oh, now. shit. This is the guy of the Border Reavers band. This is the yeah, guy yeah, yeah. who has... Oh, uh... I, I didn't know that you didn't know. I yeah, didn't know. He was I... the last one that we invited. He's the, the Reaver. Amazing. All right, let's check. Let's let's click on that war th score thing again. So we have 7,000 soldiers and he has a... We have 7,500 7, and he has about 6,900. So I'm going to bring in another ally. And uh, another thing that we should do is we should make a... Oh, do we have our... What is that? That's our army? Yeah, why isn't it at full strength? Oh, it's still in strengthening. It is It is becoming in strengthening. Click the second red one, the un... The un uh, this one? Yeah, the... Uh, one oh, of the, yeah, sorry, one of those Strasburg, I mean. Oh, that's just the rally point. Yeah, we'll click on the rally point, and then just double... Just make sure that we have uh, raise all gear. Okay. Just want to make sure that there wasn't some. Yeah, we're going to get about 1,500 soldiers. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, let's get in another guy. Uh, Jim Biddy Bim Bim says, can you buy mercenaries in this? You absolutely can buy mercenaries and in this. We, uh, and we might. We might. This is part of why we saved up so much money. Um, uh, and much like actual medieval mercenaries, they have unbelievable names. Have you seen this, Sylvie? 
I only remember some of the name. Like, I remember the name format in um, CK2. Because I did play a lot of CK2. Company um, of the Hat. Oh, long, my God. Wanderers, what type of hat? Longbeard Band. Uh, I believe Company of the Hat was an actual... Like, some of these are, like, legitimate. Yeah, oh, that's, shit. Uh, that's a famous one, yeah. And okay, I'm gonna Google them to find Ooh, out the what they're fighters. They're local. We'll be supporting a local <laughs> business. The Union of Swords. Company of the Star. Union of Swords. I'm glad they unionized the swords. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Me too. Uh, medieval people simultaneously uh, didn't understand unions and understood unions more than anybody has ever understood unions. Yeah. Uh, all right. So. If he has raised armies, they are outside of our sort of uh, uh, ken. <laughs> we 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 cannot begin to understand the armies they have raised. So I think what we should do is we should probably start marching, right? Um, I think we should get eyes on our allies first, because we we don't want to get caught up with one of his armies. Allies, allies, all eyes. <laughs> Thanks, Sylvie. <laughs> yeah, no problem. This is what I'm here for. So, for example, Keith, do you see these armies that are highlighted? These are our allies coming to join us. Holy shit. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. So then, yeah, we should go meet them. Uh, there's a bunch of them, to actually. They're, okay, they're, they're, like, they're all... Oh, this guy, this guy, this guy. Uh, and then we got people coming from all over, I think. I think we got some Vikings coming, too. Uh, you? Maybe. No, that can't be right. These are separate armies. Um, this is the biggest war I've ever done outside of the Crusades. Wow. <laughs> and you know what? That's a pretty big war. So second place, not bad. Uh, we, we play... I think that this is why this works so well, Jack, is that we play Crusader Kings in a very different way. I think we're meeting in the middle here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking to KB about this earlier today. KB's a huge Crusader Kings player. And... Um, we were talking about how aggressively KB will play Crusader Kings and how I spent a lot of CK2 being so interested in Spycraft that I uh, neglected war. And it was really only playing CK3 that I realized how much fun going to war was. Yeah. And now I go to war all the time, but usually in kind of small ways. Oh shit, here come his armies. That's the, the sort of the big sort of philosophical difference between CK2 and CK3. Like I think that both of the games through their mechanics are asking the question like what is a king capable of like what how much can one guy who's in charge of a space change the world around him yeah and ck3 is like a lot more than ck2 yeah ck3 is like this guy can do stuff he can make things happen uh he can change the world in ways that in CK2, you were much more limited. Um, and I think that there's, I think that, I think that both are fun and uh, I like playing both. And I, I even though uh, it's sort of like, um, you know, take the governor off the engine decisions in games that are like purely to facilitate enjoyment of the game tend to not, I think, be better for the games like overall well-being in ck3's case i think it's the opposite i think it's like more yeah. accurate and also more fun and also better for the game i i like ck2 a lot I, you know i played hundreds of hours of ck2 um yeah. i think this is the better game um yeah uh in part because of the way it teaches you how to play it um sylvie uh you like keith and i are in a really great place where you know mm -hmm. we came to ck3 knowing already how to play ck2 cat yeah. had never played two and the tutorial for three, the way three teaches you how to play Crusader Kings is extraordinary. It is one of the best tutorials I've ever I've played. heard. I remember that being like a big thing when it was coming out that people were like, oh, this one is... They figured it out. Yeah, I don't know if accessible is the, is the right word necessarily, but tutorialize is a lot Wait, better. are we fighting someone? No, we're just walking. Oh, they're fighting each other. Uh, this is a big thing about the HRE uh, as it was in two. It is constantly fighting itself. Um... And right now, the Kaiser is kind of mad about that. Um, yeah, yeah. He he uh, he's like lowered cr uh, raised crown authority. Uh, and Guys, come on! Yeah, stop it! Like the 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 uh, harassed parent holding the two children apart. <laughs> I'm supposed to be king. 
I'm You're the supposed to listen to me. Oh, so something that has been super helpful uh, for us, Sylvie, is that the Kaiser is an idiot. He's a spineless atheist. <laughs> um, he is like, he's a cynical, craven, chaste okay. weirdo who yeah. uh, is terrified of everybody. Something that is so cool about this run is that we are the coolest, most chill guy in the oh. world. And the Kaiser is terrified of us because... He's spine. Sorry, he's spineless. Um, Kaiser like, Cell thieving a Chad it, Duke. <laughs> it's a really funny <laughs> thing about the way that this game like does personalities in a very binary way. Uh, we gotta watch out. Okay, so we got we got seven and a half thousand here. This is close. This is close. What is happening? Your gear of. Of uh oh, this person has a hook on us and is forcing us. This is who you tried to kill. Yeah, yeah. No, this is the person who's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We did try to kill. I didn't realize that the blackmail was from the victim. I thought it was. I know about. No, it was. You tried to kill me. Now give me. So you can you can use a hook to forcibly change your contract, your feudal contract. And that's what she's doing now. I will say this. Why are you in armor, my friend? That's right. It's because you are fighting at the war that I have sent you to die in. (laughs) <laughs> um, this is just the next level assassination absolutely next level assassination now there is a move that you can do that just uh, breaks my heart every single time I do it because it just is so sort of um, like uh, uh, metagamingly cruel where you can mm-hmm. create a single battalion containing one person <laughs> <laughs> oh, I literally never Ooh. thought to do that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've never thought to do that ever. That's so fun. This is a tactic that uh, Kat, a- my partner, and our friend Connor Fawcett came up with. Um, when we were trying to get rid of one of our sons and we couldn't kill our son, but we we made a single battalion and sent him up against an army of like twelve hundred men, and we yeah. were like, we were like, we felt really bad about this, but legal, we, but legal. legal, but we did it, and then they captured him. They didn't kill uh, him. And at that I was really point, hoping he'd win. I know. At that point, we were like, holy shit, this is now. This guy is now like, uh. uh <laughs> like fate it you know we 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 have to respect this guy um but it, well, they, it, i think they do their best to not kill the engine yeah yeah because yeah. they were they're worth more if the game thinks they're worth more in the war score <laughs> if they're alive it's so funny but you're just it's... like this guy can rot in jail i don't care that strategy is great. It's like a no lose situation because like either I mean, I guess the capturing is the, the slight loss, but it's like the person you're sending in the army dies or you get a really cool story about one guy taking on 1200 people and winning. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it would be a little trickier to engineer with like a non kid um, because I think the, the, okay. the mechanics of separating an individual would be hard, right? Keith? I think as long as they're a knight, you can do it. <laughs> the one person battalion is a nepotism move only is what you're telling me? Oh my god. I mean, do we want to just try this on Countess Georgia? Um, You can do it with any knight, says Video Witch. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Countess Georgia. I think that Georgia. we should try. I think that we should try this. Oh, um, they're moving, you... so we can't detach regiments just yet. Oh, sorry. You mean try to to kill one person? Uh, yes. I thought you meant should we try to fight the seven thousand people with our seven and a half thousand people? Uh, well, uh, we should, right? But once the army yeah. sort of consolidate, what we should do is we should just I, wait I here. Mean, we should we should not uh, give ourselves any disadvantage. Uh, is that kill a great Georgia? Strategy. I think not by not killing a knight. Ah, shit! You're right. You're right, yeah. Keith. Knights are like pretty um... serious. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you besieging? They're just standing next the HRE? to us. Yeah. No, they're they're besieging. Oh yeah, they're attacking us. No, they're attacking the HRE. Well, well, they're attacking one of our allies. 
Oh, right. So right, one right, of right. our allies, like major cities, are their closest, um, like uh, uh, high value targets. So does this mean that they might also accidentally get in a war with the HRE as a whole? Uh, we mm, thought about this. Probably not. It's unlikely. Can we add an L there, Wildo? The uh, Kaiser is uh, <laughs> one of their allies, and this kind of serves us really well, actually, because the Kaiser has a gigantic army, but he won't raise his sword against us so nobody gets the kaiser you know mm. um so Ida, who is one of our kinswomen has given birth but because the kid is part of our dynasty we get to give him a name and the name we've chosen is wildo von habsburg <laughs> oh my god yep he's a habsburg i know i know uh the habsburgs <laughs> are everywhere uh, yeah, and uh, we are sort of the Habsburgs, but not quite. We're about. That's to how win. they end up in Spain. This they start in the HRE, I believe. Okay, yeah, I think you're right. So everybody has kind of calmed down. You know, we have uh, the first and second army of Nittlefield, and then our army, and then the first army of Halstad. Th these are our allies who are sort of waiting here. The question now is where we make our first move. And now we're in like a really weird game because usually when you play Crusader Kings and you go to war, you're going to war over these little regions, right? Where it's like, you know, your targets are pretty clear. I'm going to attack this city or whatever. <clears throat> but we want Hungary. And obviously we yeah. get the most tactical advantage by taking out his capital, which is, uh, I believe, here. Yeah. Um, but my question is, you know, how we want to begin the assault on this well i i have a suggestion Ooh. the first thing is that we just go right in and try to get these guys right here and just flatten his army yeah we have if I'm, my count is right if your count is right we i thought that we had slightly more than they do we do okay uh, no i mean just in this area here but it looks like maybe i was wrong or maybe one of our guys left to go somewhere else um, uh yeah i don't actually know what's happening here the 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 northern who's band guy might to be... our south that's walking uh ooh, these guys oh that's not they're no. un, they're not involved yeah they're unaligned uh so 45 so five thousand. yeah so they actually have way more people over here they've got seven thousand. we have five thousand. um but we don't want them to take those cities it might be too late to stop them but it might be worth investing in mercenaries early. Also, we've got a notification there that our blue. We do. The blue uh, so what's happening is they. Oh. Why the fuck is? Oh no, we don't want an alliance. Herman of Wittenberg. Well, how many soldiers do you have? Four hundred and seventy-seven. No, you piece of shit. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, so something that's worth noting here, Keith, is that this number is actually 1,500 plus 2,400. Oh, okay, so that I was counting, right? I was like, I thought that we had 7,500 and they had uh, 7,000. So that is about how it shakes down, right? Um, yeah, more or less. I think you are right about bringing in mercs. I mean, I, I'm always, um, I will always advocate for spending our money, you know, especially when we're in a situation like this where we're in a war and you know usually yeah. in crusader kings a war sees a, a massive reduction in your income and we're still yeah. seeing a massive reduction except we're still making nine gold a month you know i know it's great okay so here's here's my here's my plan buy a mercenary uh -huh. they will um oh we should um remove all of our uh all of our rally points and we should make one rally point as close to where we already are as possible can we do that? Although the mercenaries may spawn in our capital regardless of what we do with the rally points. I don't remember how that works. Uh, how close can we place rally points? We can put them anywhere in our territory, which oh. I guess is, I guess it doesn't matter. It's so far away. I don't want uh, them to spawn here. No, I think that they'll just spawn in our capital. Okay. Okay, um, and uh, we should pick um, the most cost efficient, right? They are being ordered by cost efficiency. So it's almost that's almost true. There are a couple outliers, but we should check to see if there's anything affordable that's three diamonds. Okay. Is uh, diamonds quality or like quantity or? 
it is quality. Okay, there's okay. not really. They will let us buy this the the Catlin band. And let me tell you, you do not want to be in debt to the mercenaries. They will they will leave. But we'll we'll pay them their whole thing and then we'll be in debt and then we'll just slowly work back up with our plus 9 a month. So it's not like the worst thing in the world. Uh but we might be better going for something more like uh the Alsace fighters will where we'll get 1700 per per man it's cheaper than some of the cheaper ones the I simple cost benefit analysis yeah 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 you want to bring in uh <laughs> the Alsace fighters or do you want to bring in the great catalan company um well there's there oh um what are the terrain benefits of these? I think that probably the Alsace fighters are like more uh, equipped for like, you know, general stuff. And a bit cheaper. Unless they unless the other side has got a lot of horses. Let's see. Because then we uh, want the pole lines. horses. Nah, they have some horses. Have you know, we're looking horses. at we're looking at 300, uh, 400 horses, roughly. I think it's. I think it can go either way. I don't think it's a big deal. E either of those would be fine, probably. Uh, yeah, I'll get the cheaper man. We get them for three local. years. They're local. They're local. <laughs> um, Your oh, approval rating through quick, the roof. <laughs> before we hit higher, let's check the captain of the Catlin Company. You sure you don't want to hire Captain Thankolf? <laughs> I do love the name. Okay, yeah, go forget it. Go back. What did I thank Ulf? I don't even know him. <laughs> oh yeah, this guy's so much better, and he's super aggressive. Yeah, nothing will say looking. thank Ulf. Worth okay. looking. Uh, ooh, are they? No, oh, fuck they are. me. He spawned down there. It's okay. They have boats, and they it won't charge us to move them. I don't think. It's okay. They have boats. They have boats. They have boats. They won't, okay. they won't charge. So, you guys, I need you to just, uh, uh... You just have them go, yeah, that's perfect, I think. How long is this going to be? They're going to go all around Italy. <laughs> uh, they're actually crossing here. They're, they're, oh, they're uh... Okay. They're fording, or oh. they're, oh, they're taking the, the, the canal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I think we should just head over and, and attack one of, the group, one of their groups. And our allies will follow us. And I, maybe it's worth making another save right here. Yeah, that's a really good point. But I'm going to make a unique save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Okay. I think we have to get really poetic and, like, write the weary hearts of our soldiers. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I saw you type weir, and I was like, <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, they don't like that comma, huh? Why don't they like the come up piece of shit? We get an M dash. They won't like an M dash if they don't like a comma. You don't you yeah. think? I can't even do an M dash in in. Uh, they nope. hate the M dash. Wow. They hate the M dash. Okay. okay, it's poetic in our hearts. We did actually make the save though, right? Yeah, yeah, the save is there. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're just gonna fuck up the nearest army. Yeah, I, I think so. And they're sitting on they're 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 losing supplies while they're doing this too, which is good for us. They are. And look, our allies are moving at the same time. You know? God, the complexity of Lockstep. the uh AI in this game amazes me every time, you know? Yeah. Uh on the one hand, well, uh, we can get there? I don't think so. I think that we're I think that we're like gonna be a little bit late. Maybe to save the top one, I don't know. I don't Maybe want we to go alter to a course tournament. for the top one. The top one? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe no, no. Just stay the course. Think, stay the course. Think, I'm just, you know, I because what we, we want is for the second, the top one to join us in the fight. But then, if they don't join us, then we have a better chance of winning because it's always better to get. It's going to happen simultaneously, and, roughly. Oh, yeah. whoa, whoa! Yeah, the army's moving. There we go. All of them are coming. Yeah. How confident this is what do we, we feel about this? Okay. Yeah, we Low. gotta save. Low confidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh. 4,000 men versus 200. The meter looks good. The meter looks good. Oh. Oh. No, no. Oh. Hey. Oh, no. Oh, got, oh, oh, got main by battle. This is good. This, this is, is going good. so well. This Keith. is going so well. Wait, is this a wife fight? Hold up. This is a wife. Yeah, this is a wife fight. Yo. And our wife is crushing. Look at the difference in their commander scores. 26 My wife could beat up your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Look, our ambi our Im ambitious arbitrary wife is fighting to be her to to make herself a queen. Yeah, of Hungary. All women Hungary. are queens, Keith. <laughs> no, that's not true. Only a few of them are queens. Okay. Okay, now we just make for the capital, right? <laughs> that's what we do. I uh, I think so. I think we go straight for the capital, and we should redirect our mercenaries too. Look at them. Look at them slinking off. All right, mercenaries, my beautiful, my beautiful Italians. <laughs> my paisans. <laughs> They're not Italians. Um, I've only been to Italy once. I went to Florence years ago, oh. and uh, I I got on a train, and um, I was so jet lagged. Oh, we haven't swiped the pug. <clears throat> and uh, we uh, had... it looks like I, I was right. The mercenaries did not cost any money to 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 go into the water. I was pretty sure that that was true because um, I think that part of what you pay for when you're paying hundreds of gold is that they've got boats and they can use them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're paying for transportation. Sorry, I interrupted your... No, story, uh, your, your we, story we misread how... We couldn't speak Italian and we misread uh, Italian train tickets and we ordered these train tickets that we, you know, we had intended to board this train very, very early in the morning. That wasn't the screw up. We bought tickets in completely separate train carriages and... Um, so we had to ride this train jet lagged, you know, in the morning going across Tuscany, uh, this, this heavy mist. I felt like I was in Italian Silent Hill. Oh, shit, we're at war. Um, and uh, obviously Kat was sat with a bunch of uh, Italians and they had a super, super nice chat. And I was sat with a bunch of Italians and I just like rested my head against the window and didn't speak a word. Mm. This is um, really bad. Uh, it's, it's not oh. great. Let's, uh, but let's, these let's guys play. are going to join, you know. Yeah, they're gonna join. Technically, we have the we have more people. I think I think that we have time. Chad is mad that we or we pause. like changed our army's course and that caused a degree of attrition. My gut was that we could we could um, uh, sort of um, bite that attrition, but we'll see. Uh, Don't yeah. we supply we'll once we go back in friendly territory? Come on, come on. Ooh. Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Look, look, look! Oh, hey. The armies are joining us. Dramatic reinforcement. No, don't. Yeah, okay, cool. they, they're trickling in though. This is, you know, bad. No, meta. we're doing fine. This is gonna be a long battle, but I, I feel confident actually. Oh, I don't know. I feel like one of your knights is flaming everybody in team. Oh chat. yeah, there it is. Oh, there we there go. There it is. There's don't the worry, tide. guys. We scale. Ooh, are they turning? I'm pretty sure these tides are turning. I'm fairly sure these tides are turning. Fritz Wilhelm in the chat, a name from the fucking Holy Roman Empire, says, <laughs> Wife saved. <laughs> where am I? Strong wife, where am I, Italians? Life. I oh. think they're Germans. Where are my beloved Italians? <laughs> okay. It's looking good. We have a war score of plus 49. And again, we are trying to invade Hungary. I have to keep reminding myself that this isn't just like a little territory war, you know? No, yeah. you're taking a whole ass country. The yeah. good thing now about taking the capital is that it's just going to be like, oh, we're really low on, uh, <laughs> on, on people. We're down. We've lost two thirds. That's OK. That's what allies are for, Keith. And that's why we hide the Italians. <laughs> the German Italians. <laughs> All right, it looks like we are taking it. Who's who's lollygagging up there? Who's taking some tertiary? What is that? It's another one of our allies has gotten involved. This is Halstad. They've decided to do their own thing. Halstad, yeah. you should not do your own thing. You should come with us. A pest. How many months here on the uh, the old siege? Eight. Okay, that's not terrible. These idiots have ten. I'm real worried about that 2,000 force. Uh, but the thing is, we actually have shit tons of soldiers here. Okay. Uh, they're just- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only saw the army of Strasbourg numbers. 
Should we see what they're up to over there? Well, I'm not worried. They can they can besiege our cities, but we're going to okay. win the war before they do anything interesting. Also, these are our ally cities, you know. I, I... <laughs> it will affect the war score. You see that we did. We have lost five already. Ah. They're not making progress. They're about to, but... What, uh, we, what would be really nice if we could kidnap a baby during the siege? That would oh. really lock things up nice and tidy. That'd be great. I oh, love oh. seeing the people this game transforms my friends into. I know. That's, oh, Sylvie, you haven't been watching the, the previous... No, uh, I really need to go back and watch the archive after this. That's I think a the great beauty LP. of Crusader Kings. Is it, it's, it sort of reveals to you the uh, psychopathic mind of a medieval ruler. Yes, absolutely. It's sort of just oh, necessarily game, where it's like, I'm, play I'm playing a game, but also the I'm playing someone to whom the world was a game. I always feel like at the beginning of every Crusader Kings LP I make, I say to the viewer, listen, this game is modeling a very particular kind of ideology, and I need you to understand that we are going to be inhabiting a... <laughs> A kind of political ideology. Get ready oh, for yeah. evil. I'm making one disclaimer. A casual Welcome. playthrough. A casual playthrough of Crusader Kings is more evil than any Friends of the Table character has ever been. Absolutely. Uh, who's the most evil Friends of the Table character? Um, Commandant Cash. Yeah. It's, mm. uh, but she's an idiot. Yeah. Sure, but so is uh, Gerthard. I feel like pretty Christ evil. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, sorry. I, I was I was limiting myself oh, to, to player, character player characters? characters. There have been more evil player characters than Christ. Uh, more more evil characters than Christ. And Christ. And Virtue would a, do great in uh, Crusader. Oh games. my God! Or Virtue she would fail horribly because she would be so cruel. <laughs> Snitch Knightley is cruel. Dahlia loves war for the sake of war. Dahlia loves war for the sake of a, a particular series of ideas that she has. Um, uh, let's see. I mean, Heller is, of course, famously evil, but Heller is evil in a really interesting way. Um, oh, you know who I've been thinking about recently who is who is bad, bad? Grace. Who? Uh, Grace who? from Counterweight. Oh. The Divine I Grace. Oh, Divine Oh, I do remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, never had any love for Grace. Uh, we are paused, by the way. I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm just thinking about evil people we've made. <laughs> yeah, show. we're just we're just ruminating on evil it's, right it's, now. This is the part of the game where it's waiting by default. It's sort of live pause. Arel is evil in a particular kind of way. Um, yeah. I mean, of course, when we say evil, what do we mean? Evil by whose standards? You know, evil means a lot of things. Uh, it sure does. The Stargrave is evil in an in a yeah. The Stargrave is evil in a particular way. Um, the Stargrave is an instrument of war. Um, uh, rip. Was an instrument of war. Oh dear. I don't know what's happened to the style grave. It's probably too bad to depict on the show. Whew. Somehow you're losing progress, says Eleanor. No, we're not losing progress. Oh, the war score changes like when the war is long. If but we look, so it'll, it'll something actually give that us is a notable breakdown here is that this score, siege, they, they do not have the soldiers to yeah. progress. Which Let's is see how long cool. that other one will take. And these idiots are going to take basically a year. 14 months, yeah. Let's let's click on the war score and see how the, what the breakdown is. Because I think we'll, we'll have like long war, minus 10 for... Uh, the uh, defender controls, oh, defender war, controls target. war target. Yeah, which and is then, one of these allied cities. Yeah. We've, got our, we've hit the max for battles one, so at this point it's not... We, we just want to take prisoners and occupy battles. Things. Yeah. Here it is. We're about to hit that. And look at this. I was mad at our friend for not helping us, but now, now I'll take, it, it I'll take like two a good cities, idea. You know? I'll, I'll take two <laughs> cities. Yeah. Oh, motion would be days, great yeah. at Crusader Kings, but also motion would have a cheat code that just doesn't let the armies die. Yeah. There's a version of that. <laughs> For this, really? Uh, yeah. There's a mod. There's like a motion mod. <laughs> I love so... motion. Such a cool character. Oh um, shit! Just... Oh. Oh, and our daughter's the Doc Volk. <laughs> oh, what a great day! All sorts no. of good things happening. We become the king of Hungary. Our daughter learned 
Uh, she hung out too, around too many uh, sailors and learned their vulgar doc speak. Um, <laughs> uh, that was actually, by the way, that was the first the first draft of uh, Back to the Future. Uh, Marty McFly <laughs> hung out with Doc Vulgar, but it got an NC-17. <laughs> so, hey, extreme. He kept saying the C word. It was really weird. Extremely quick podcast. <laughs> Is Back to the Future good? I haven't seen it in oh, years. It's, on, it's amazing. Yeah, it's so oh, pretty Oh, shit. You know what I watched for the first time the other day? I watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, that's oh. real. It's so good. You know what it made me think of the whole time? Hmm. My dear friend, Keith Carberry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I mean, that's I, a very important movie to me. I think uh, the thing is, I think Keith, you represent uh, Ferris and Cameron and Sloane, and that is why you are wow. a full person. Uh, something that was amazing watching Ferris Bueller's Day Off is that Ferris Bueller is a fucking sociopath. Oh yeah, he's yes. off Ferris Bueller. Well, no, well, okay, well, sort of. Ferris Bueller is very sad because you know what he wants to do? He wants to have one more amazing day with his best friend Cameron before they go to different colleges. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. They're going to separate. Which is completely unsaid in that movie, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they talk about it a bit. Ferris kind of, well, what's interesting is I think the movie is very is uh, very knowledgeable of the fact that, that that it is painting Ferris as a complete weirdo. You know, he is a he's a odd protagonist, and I think that you get these little glimpses of Ferris as a uh, sort of whole person, and they are all sad. Uh, yeah. he, Ferris says, you know, uh, what am I going to do? Life moves pretty fast. You got to take, you know, you got to take these moments when they come. And it's very easy to read that as a sort of broad statement. But it is, I think, fascinating when you read it as a hyper specific statement, which is I want to spend time with Cameron and Sloan, people I love. Yeah. Um, um, he's a great. fucking weirdo, though. Yeah, he uh, is. I almost said we were talking about uh, we were talking about the Mako. Um, uh, episode description thing for the counterweight prequel oh, yeah, stuff. Sure. And I almost sent you, but I couldn't find like a good enough clip. I almost sent you a clip of Ferris Bueller when we were talking about that because it's the scene where um, he's, while they're talking about his attendance record, he hacks into the school and oh, lowers yes. his attendance. Lowers the, lowers the number. Which is, uh, it's amazing and it's such a fun part of his character that he's like a weird tech guy. He's got, he's got like a, a synthesizer and he's hacking into the school. He's got a kind of um, Kevin McAllister thing going. He does. He also has a, uh, uh, the himself from War Games thing going on. Uh, is that I was gonna also say, Matthew um, Broderick? It is yeah, it also is. Matthew Broderick, yeah. Uh, the, the like a very like mu like very similar character is um zero cool or crash override John, uh, Johnny Lee Miller's character from Hackers. Oh my God, Hackers uh, is wonderful. I should watch Hackers. Oh, oh, have Hackers you seen it? Fantastic. No. Keith, or uh, it's maybe I've seen it forever ago, but I don't remember. We should watch it. Hackers together. I'll okay. put it on the calendar and, and let's yeah. find a day and um, oh the God. three of us should watch yeah, Hackers. Sure. Be I would love to. I adore that movie. Um, um it's great. The I now I'm going to say this is going to sound to me it sounds egotistical, but I'm going to say I do see the Ferris Bueller Cameron thing. I am also Sloan. I'm the three. I'm all three. <laughs> what does Sloan do that is like that's Keith? Uh, Sloan is the like um, Sloan is out there excited about the people she cares about experiencing the world oh that's very nice oh um you know that's also very, the, that's, that sounds right yeah that's keith that's i thought maybe it was the i thought maybe it was the uh no never mind i'm not doing yeah. it there's that great moment where um uh what is it they are like in the car and they pull up next to Ferris's dad and Ferris and Cameron hide and Sloane pulls her sunglasses down and is like the person in the car opposite. And then halfway through, I think Ferris grabs her ankle and she just bursts out laughing. Um, it's, it's, the movie is full of so many really great moments. Also, all yeah. time great destruction of a car in a movie. Um, oh yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. anybody who is dad, ever... I really resonate with the dad stuff in that movie. Although we have yeah, very different, totally. we have very different fathers. Uh, me and Cameron, but um, oh, God. Any, anything, anything with a with like a dad thing in it, I'm like, you've already you've already got me halfway there. Oh Cameron yeah, How, is right there with you. Extraordinary 
in that movie. Alan Ruck playing Alan Cameron. Ruck, phenomenal. I love Alan Ruck. He is so good in um, Succession, and that was where I kind of came to him. And, you know, the character he plays in Succession is so pathetic. And he plays, um, what's that guy called? Uh, Connor. Yeah. So well. And seeing him in Ferris Bueller and watching the, like, He's always been this good. And watching him play a character I like and want the best for was just a delight. There's that yeah. there's that great moment where um, you know, after we learn that Cameron is really good at making these prank phone calls, uh, we also learn that he has to do this weird physicality when he does it. He like rocks backwards <laughs> yes, and forwards. Yes, yes. It really helps um that uh that Alan Ruck and Matthew Broderick had just done I think they were in multiple like Broadway shows together before uh, being in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. They have like a ton of chemistry. Is Matthew Broderick gay? I don't know. He has a wife and kids, I think. Huh. Okay. For some reason in my brain, I was always like, Matthew Broderick is gay. And it always lent this movie with him playing like a straight guy, this really weird energy. But I just got the vibe. He's, (laughs) (laughs) you know, he's just got the vibe. Um, so many good bits in that movie. The uh, uh, right, it was Sarah Jessica Parker. He's married to Sarah Jessica Parker. I don't know if he still is, but he was for a very long time. Wow. Uh, Fritz Wilhelm says he's just cool. He is just cool. Um, he yeah. something I I uh, Matt yeah, they've been, they're says, still married. They've been married since 1997. They were together when he killed someone in Ireland. Uh, yeah, I was gonna. That was the one <laughs> Matthew Broderick uh, <laughs> trivia Broderick I had was the car accident. accident. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm glad that you guessed by accident. That's very generous. Jim Biddy Bim Bim said, "Just but, don't ask about the murder he did." <laughs> he he. I. It was a. I think that it was a. Um. Oh, it was. I guess it was eighty-seven. Yeah, so no, they 87. weren't. They weren't. I thought it was ninety-seven. Uh, but no, he hit someone with his car in Ireland. Yikes! Awful. Awful. Yeah. Um. Very sad. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the twist and shout sequence, the crowd scene where they, where he's up on the float singing twist and shout, yeah, is one of my favorite crowd scenes in movies. Um, um there was a great. There's a one of the all time good movie commentaries is for uh Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Highly recommend people go and watch the director commentary. Um. Uh, for that movie because uh, oh my god how am I blanking on his name uh, uh, the, the director John Hughes John Hughes talking about Ferris Bueller's Day Off is just constantly doing the exact thing that I want from a director's commentary which is like telling little stories about every yeah, scene yeah. like stuff that was going on in the background things on set that were happening um, and and he, you know, he seems like a really nice guy and he has all these fun stories. And um, the scene where they were doing that parade, like, turned into kind of an impromptu parade, like, in Chicago. <laughs> and so a lot of the shots that they have of people reacting are actual shots of people reacting oh, let's go. on the street that. who are just like, yeah, there's a parade here. That's crazy. I'm having a good time. People singing along to Twist and Shout who like had no idea a movie That's was being wonderful. filmed. It very, has very this cool. amazing feeling to it. It really um, does, yeah. Because he does two songs. I can't remember what he does first, but then he does Twist and Shout and it just comes alive. Um, my all-time favorite crowd scene in a movie is in the... Is that, wa- is that park song? Walking in a park. It's a ballad, right? Or it's like a love song that he sings first. Yeah, it's like a love song. I I can't remember. I can't um, remember what the song's name is though. Really quick before it like gets, uh, disappears too far up the chat, someone um, Charlie Walnut asks, "How does one watch director commentary?" Oh, we're back to ah, uh, we return to a <laughs> well, previous topic. <laughs> um, it's either physical media or I know that crit- the Criterion channel if you're looking for a specific because uh, they say specifically they don't have anything that can play discs on their TV um, if you're looking for something that's just streaming I know that there's a selection of stuff on the Criterion channel with director's yeah, commentary shout out to the um, Criterion channel if you haven't spent time there they rule uh, they are constantly putting out really cool really really cool stuff for a long time I was sort of um cautious about the Criterion channel because I was like oh they're only going to be putting out the fancy movies that I yeah. don't want to watch right now but they uh, they have such an eye for kind of uh, exciting cinema of all kinds um, 
I have a great um, time with Criterion. Have you seen the Razzies collection that they're doing? No, that's so cool. I didn't know they yeah. were doing that. Um, they're doing like it's okay. I'll just name some of the the movies in part of this. Well, one of them is shocking to me, which is Cruising 1980, which is the Al Pacino goes undercover as a gay dude in like this San Francisco to find a serial killer. I love that movie. Um, but also there's Xanadu, oh, uh, God, that Barb Wire, Showgirls, Cocktail starring Tom Cruise. Freddy got fingered. The Blair Witch Project is on here, You're which kidding. again just the Blair Witch discredits the legend. Razzies once again. The Razzies has had a lot of big misses. One the, of the most frightening yeah. films I've ever seen ever was a. And I'm sure I've talked about this on a recording before. Um, a copy of the Blair Witch Project that was submitted on VHS to Sundance. It has oh. no opening or closing credits oh, and it shit. has a deeply fucked up vhs aesthetic throughout because it was a single vhs tape um it's amazing uh it the film just begins and is distorted to hell and back and then when it hits the end it just ends uh there is none of this you know like here is how the footage was recorded it's yeah. amazing i should that sounds like the best way to have seen that movie do i still have it wait i'm gonna open up my film folder here i should send you this copy sylvie because it's so oh, good please, especially that is one of my fucking all-time favorite horror oh movies. blair witch is amazing if you watch it on a high definition screen this vhs version yeah i do have it i'll send this to you sylvie yes uh it is yes, how, dub. how big is this file i bet uh, it's like the... 400 <laughs> megabytes we can figure it out after the stream <laughs> Do you know the Razzie movie that I've always wanted to see? I, I I have it. I just haven't gotten to it yet because it's very long. Heaven's yeah. Gate. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought that's on the list here. What is Heaven's um, Gate? Heaven's Gate is an extremely long, extremely expensive um, Western that was like extremely maligned by critics because of a bunch of unrelated shit. Basically, in the last 10 years, it's had a little bit of a um, uh, of a uh, of a re uh, reappraisal reappraisal. Um, but it's still a movie that people are like, this is like horrible, bloated Hollywood at its worst mess. Huge cast, super expensive. Um, I need to watch that just to see what Holly, bloated Hollywood at its worst it was like back then, I as know, opposed right? to what we yeah, got yeah. these days. Well, and Madam it, Web it in is, theaters now. It is a. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is three and a half hours long. Um, they, I, I, I mean, I'd watch it if if it was it's interesting. Not Brad Dourif. But uh, it does have Brad Dourif, very excited to get Jeff Bridges, Chris Christopherson, Chris Wait, Walken. This movie has great on this is great. great. Sam Waterston. Yeah. He's a Bellu Pair, isn't it? Wow. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, but, uh, let's see. Sylvie, that's the first time I've ever heard someone say her name out loud, and it immediately makes sense. I have always called this French woman Isabel Puppet. <laughs> I also used to call her that, and then one of my movie friends. Isabel Luper is absolutely Luper. the, like, uh... Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Cetius Blue in the chat says, reminds me how when The Ring was out in theaters, or theaters, I saw it at about 2 a.m. on TV, just the video from The Ring on TV. Oh, no! And I thought I was going to die. That's amazing. I have uh, um, just this gut memory, this amazing gut memory of not being able to sleep one night and coming downstairs uh, uh, to where my parents were watching television and they were watching the exact moment that Edward Woodward is burned alive in The Wicker Man. Um, oh holy fuck! And that was amazing. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't the forget old that shit. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was terrifying at the time, and I and I sort of sat with that horror for years. But now that I have seen that film a bunch, I'm like, what a great first encounter with that movie is just seeing this man cry like, oh god, Jesus Christ, as he burns to death inside the Wicker Man. Um, I've never seen either Wicker Man. Uh, another movie uh, uh, that it's not a Razzie. I don't. Hey, think, remember but, when uh, I said should we do a five minute podcast about? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy yeah. with this, but uh, yes. Uh, I just saw Renfield, which I really like. Oh, That's I haven't seen it yet. It's Nicholas Holt and um, Nicholas Cage, right? The yeah, two Nicholases. Yeah. The two Nicholases. It's got a few, and uh, Ben Schwartz, who's phenomenal in it. Have um, you seen it, Sylvie? Uh, Renfield? No, I haven't. I remember it's got hearing like a 55 rotten on rotten. Yeah, tomatoes. that was kind of the impression I got from it. Was that no, it was it's like good. it's mm. it's a little thin, and I wish it was. Fi it's really short. It's like 90 minutes. I wish it was like 
25 minutes longer and like got more into the like Renfield like sort of trying to reclaim his human identity and maybe a little bit more into the background of the gang that they're fighting. But it's got a lot of really funny, gory action in it. And the jokes that are there are good. Okay. And the performances are unbelievable. I mean, Ben Schwartz's performance and Nicolas Cage's performance are unbelievable. And there's some really great camera work, some really, really good camera stuff going on. There's a part in a fight scene where they're like um, uh, Nicholas Holt is like doing some stuff with like a claw, like a tablecloth, not a tablecloth, like a like a like a dinner napkin. That is like so fun. Like he throws Nicholas it. Holt is such a good physical performer. I he mean, throws it at the camera, like it's gonna hit someone's face, and you see it sort of like engulf the camera in white. That's uh, lovely. And, and it's and then it's super good. And then it, he like throws it and pushes a guy, and the camera sort of does all of this from the tablecloth perspective, <laughs> and then it cuts back into. It's very cool. It was very good. There's a lot of stuff like that. The action is really well. Filmed. I have a lot of love for Nicholas Holt from watching him in Mad Max. And, you know, my initial reaction seeing Mad Max was, you know, like a lot of people, just being blown away by the artistry of the car work, you know, of the stunt work, mm-hmm. of, yeah. uh, you know, shooting this stuff practically and making it look good. And then as I watched it more, um, anchoring that movie around Nicholas Holt as this kind of like fragile, obsessed, Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, war-torn teenager. Um, His physical performance in that movie just undersell, uh, undersells, uh, underscores so much of the, you know, um, uh, practical work in the stunts in that movie. He's a great performance there. Such, he is such a different guy than he is in that movie. It's, I didn't even know that it was the same guy. He's not bald or covered in white paint. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Silver paint, please. (laughs) Uh, no, they um, wear white, but they spray silver on them, right? He's painted right. white in that yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I love that movie so much. He's great. Uh, Nicholas Holt. Don't have a, don't have like an, enough nice things to say. You know that guy. He's such fantastic. like a sad little twerp. He's great in the in... menu. I was about to say he's great oh, in the I menu as a different menu. type of sad twerp. I knew, I knew he was in the menu, but yeah, he's like such a down on himself loser in in uh, uh, Renfield. My Renfield um, in my heart. Is the official Renfield of Friends at the Table, Tom Waits? <laughs> oh yeah, Tom Waits was Renfield. Yeah, in, in the... Dracula, in uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, one of the greatest oh, movies I've ever seen. The Coppola I love, Dracula I love with Tom Keanu. Waits. Yeah. Have you seen uh, Coppola's Dracula, Keith? No, I've I've never seen a Dracula. You weren't on that show. Shit, you should just watch that movie. <laughs> That's a fun movie. Okay. All right, let's get back to uh, Crusader Kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need yeah, to yeah. Uh, just... Uh, Sylvie, I, I I can't thank you enough for coming on here to talk about Screamo and then just being like... Of course. I've also realized that we are three quarters of Media Club Plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we keep <laughs> doing miss, a podcast. I miss Dre. <laughs> yeah. Dre was here for a second. Yeah, yeah, Dre, was one second. Dre, Dre, Dre sent me a message. Out. They they pocket dialed us. They were doing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so That's very funny. Uh, this is kind of moot because we are probably going to die. What I am going to do is... Is Heart of the Family retroactive? I don't believe that it is. Uh, let's take oh, it. Oh, no, sorry. Not Heart of the Family. Groomed to Rule is what I was... Uh, but we already da, da, have that. Da. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. I have just that was mixing now. them up in my head. Yeah. Um, sea Stranger says Media Club Plus is so good. By the way, great work, y'all. I'm so glad people like it. Uh, yeah, me too. What's really cool is this is kind of the first podcast I've made for a long time where we are on such an uh, 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 advance from the listener it's so nice it's a delight i mean it gives keith uh uh conniptions because does, yeah. uh keith you know you can just upload finished episodes to google drive or you know you can you it's can... not the f- oh I, sorry yes the the recorded but not completed and ed- not edited episodes yeah uh they sort of live in backups on my mixer locally and that's the thing where i'm just like i don't want to delete it from here because what if something happens when i'm editing or you know what i mean and so but then i'm like but i need the space so that i can keep recording backups um what i was gonna say was it is a delight to know that we have recorded stuff we there's whole arcs of the podcast Mm -hmm. uh not just of the story that listeners haven't heard yet they don't know about demon world theory oh my god they don't know about demon (laughs) they don't know about demon world theory (laughs) Jack's most or least accurate theory. (laughs) 
It's great. It, it appeared very strong for a couple of episodes and then it disappeared. And then in the most recent episode we recorded, I say something like, I think this is part of demon world theory. <laughs> Yeah, don't hey, don't worry. P proponents of demon world theory are, are about to feast. Yeah, I, I feel like you will have many supporters <laughs> once demon world theory hits the the airway. The orange yeah. witch says, "What is demon world theory?" You got to listen to Media Club Plus to find Media out. Media Club Plus to find out. I, I think that that potentially the next episode, the episode that'll come out on Tuesday, will be a, the first demon world theory episode. Oh, oh exciting. wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. I am going to take heart of the family here. Get this close friend, uh, this uh, close family opinion. Uh, it's probably important as we move into our kids dying. The next thing that we should do is we should uh, we should do this betrothal. Um, Duchess Richwara, who has syphilis? Someone here has syphilis. Who does? Hard question syphilis. to answer with your your duke is uh, my understanding of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is our son is marrying Richwara, uh, who's this woman we were like, oh, she's cool as hell. She's this 16 year old running a country. She's one of our allies. Uh, I'm happy with this. I'm, I'm good to go ahead. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, we should keep going. God, thank you for the podcast. Yeah, I mean, that was, it was a blast. This, uh, I think that someone. Oh, we control Visgrad, and we just got forty-four dollars for controlling Visgrad, and we seized an artifact, awesome. the Arpad Dynasty. Very man. nice. Yo. Very nice. Okay, so I think that what we should do is help off uh, fourteen seventy-three over here, take that city, and then we should go resupply so that we're not. Um, uh, uh, what like do you mean by go resupply? Oh, if we go back into Holy Roman er Emperor territory. Our supplies right here that we see we have a uh, oh here one fourteen out of one fifty. Those are our supplies. Uh, our supplies they're actually much higher than I thought, but we will be able to um, uh, uh, to re uh, uh, to reinforce. I think. Okay, cool. Look, these guys in the north are besieging that city. Oh, very nice. Oh, cool. She's off to Frisia to play. When this happens regularly, Sylvie, we have a yeah. shit ton of children, and one of them goes off to play, and then they all go off to play. Sure. That seems like parenting to me. <laughs> I've never been a parent. Me neither. I have been a child. Oh. Um, okay, so. I did go out to play when I was one of those. Should we so... stop them from, from getting that there? Getting what? The 2163 besieging... These guys? Yeah, these guys. Can we beat them? We don't How want them to get that. Have? I think we can beat them. Oh, we, yeah, we can beat them. Everybody follow me. Don't you also have defending forces, right? That are garrisoned uh, there? Sort of, yeah, but they are being reflected yeah. in this bar. Yeah, right. No, exactly. I, I, yeah, I just figured, like, will that add to... Will you have enough to deal oh, with? Oh, I don't 000? know. Uh, we should, yeah. in theory, yeah. but I don't think we like get bolstered. I don't think people come Who out of the castle. Who's this little freak? Who's this person down here? Who? That that that's stuck over. Oh, we have a way a waypoint there now. Oh wait, why is one of our armies not going over? Six hundred and thirty men have decided. Oh, I, they're reinforcing. That's what it, this. So we took this over. So now we can reinforce to. Them. Oh, you want me to? Send them back? Um, am I wrong? That doesn't sound right. No, ah, I think that we should them fuck them up. Yeah. Oh, Those look, they got scared. Everybody is now moving. I think that they are going to uh, consolidate themselves and try and fight us, but we are now bringing our entire army in to. Um... Very nice. This is great. Yeah, they're running away because they're scared. <laughs> and they're so little. We actually don't have to fight them. All we have to do is keep them from taking. Up, but we might want to defend that. I recognize the an anxious look on my servant's face. She is here to bring me bad news. My lord, you must come quickly. Countess Gertrude of Ravensburg, Ravensburg was just seen leaving the chambers of your son, Anno. Uh, did I someone mean... cut off Anno's arms? Oh. Yes. Okay. Damn. Poor Anno. Oh my god. Shit. Okay. Uh, this can only mean one thing. He has a lover. Okay. I, you know. I mean, we did send oh, her straight is... son to be in a gay marriage. Sorry, it happened in the war. Oh, she didn't cut his arms she off? She didn't cut his arms oh, off. Oh, I see. Yeah. 
I figured it out. Uh, we're going to lose mystery. this war, but we're about to get... Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, Hanlon. no. News from the plains of Kapuva finally arrives in the hands of an exhausted messenger. I know immediately that something terrible has happened to my son. There, among the dispatches, it reads, Our brave Hernman was killed leading an attack against the Hul Hungarian light horseman. He was slayed by Count Bator Orbus, oh, no. vassal of and Count you know, the Salomon. The thing is that no one's going to be able to stop laughing at the funeral. <laughs> in a fierce encounter. I could not have saved him, but no parent Let's should outlive their child. pin this guy. Let's pin this count. Maybe what, Bator? Count Bator. More like Count Bastard. No! Like, pin this guy. We're going to get this guy. More like Bat or Obus. I will find a large orb of some heavy stone and kick it at him. Uh, you and he become rivals? Yeah, we should be rivals, right? It'd be funny. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be funny. Kings. Okay. How I play stuff on Friends at the Table, too, is I should be rivals. This will be funny. This will be uh, funny. Uh, one of our guys isn't moving, by the way. Our bigger army, actually, is... is uh... Uh, wait. The whole my son, Hernman's death, has left in my heart remains clawed <laughs> open each time I think of his foul killer and the justice that remains to be served. Day after day, the cruel logic of revenge dominates my thinking, fueled each night in fitful dreams where I see Bator, Obus, and all house Jack wrecked by the same grief my Jack. family endures. This is what it's like to be Karapika. Yeah. Uh, Chain bastard. Start a Pious feud against house Jack. What is a feud? Sometimes a rivalry. Whoa, this is a mechanic I've never seen before. Oh, you've never been in a feud? No, I've never been in a feud. It's So my experiences with feuds is that sometimes a house I don't know will start a feud against my house and I won't know why. And they're basically inconsequential. So they're just, <laughs> I'm just like, I honestly get messages from them being like, you stupid motherfucker. I fucking hate you and I can't wait to see you in the ground. And then I'll be like, a dedicated hater interaction. <laughs> yeah, yes. And, and I'll be like, I literally don't know who you are. Sometimes a rivalry can grow into a vendetta against a particular house. Killing, torturing, cuckolding, robbing, and winning wars against members of the target house will increase your house's score, while falling victim to these actions will reduce it. While a feud is ongoing, all house members receive a hostile schemes bonus against members of the target house, and will be more likely to target its members. When the feud ends, your house will be rewarded based on the relative damage inflicted on its enemies, ranging from pathetic... <laughs> Ranging from pathetic family to formidable family. Okay. Cool. Well, we should do a feud, right? It'd be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. And it won't get us. Um, Is there a way to see, like, stress. my feud menu? Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, by the way, I, 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 way forever ago, we were talking about Funked Up East, the YouTube channel that I got a bunch of awesome nope, Soviet Keith, jazz from. We were talking about Funked Up East, not Funked, not funked Up funked. East. Oh, I'm sure uh, your dude, Gerald, what's his name? The dude, Gerhard? I, Ger Gerhard I, saw with that before. I, think I said yeast. Go to the recording. Yeast. You fully said yeast. Uh, the. Uh, the band the and the album that I couldn't remember the name of, I, I searched uh, just our Discord history, Jack, and it's... Oh, they got rid of it. Oh, they got rid of the whole... What? No! Okay. So this is why I couldn't find it. So this is just the first track, um, but it's... Uh, the band is Tite Paulus, T I I T. Whoa space p-a-u-l-u-s and i think that the album might be uh pave p-u-h-a-p-a-e-v <laughs> but that might just be that might just be this the word for introduction but in that in whatever language once i was in a record store with austin and he found a record for four dollars that was called all stops out and it was these two weirdos playing a hammond organ <laughs> and we bought it and took it home and it was just the most prices right commercial break ass music of these two weirdos oh, playing yeah. the hammond organ for an hour and a half you should go into your local record store and you should buy something yeah. that is four dollars it will always be a treat ah, i found it i found it 
uh, Tid Paulus Ya Sobrad. So the, the band, then J A space S O B R A D. It's a 1980 jazz fusion funk album. Very cool guitar. People are out there and are the best guitarists you've ever heard, and there's like yeah. 50,000 of them, and they're all over the place. <laughs> there's like mm -hmm. this amazing, there's like this amazing, I think it's like some kind of alto sax or something that is like playing with a uh, guitar, like playing up the neck, and they're just kind of like trading little licks back and forth. Really what good. were we listening to the other day that made you want to buy a baritone guitar? Oh. oh, that was the that was the cover of the counterweight song that someone. Oh yeah, that was so yeah. good. That was so good. Holy shit, that was amazing. It wasn't even a baritone guitar. Turns that out it was just someone that tuned their regular guitar down ha uh, half an octave or whatever, um, um, which is great. That totally works. Um, it's amazing. Let me just sort of down there that I can play. Is this a secret Samuel thing? I can dig it up. Yeah, uh, uh... it was right before Secret Samuel. I thought. Oh, I think okay. it was just it was incidentally near Secret Samuel. Let's see. I'm gonna just take a second to find this. Um... Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm sure people in the chat will. People, wanna... people, this yeah, one are not no. expecting us to keep playing Crusader Kings. Well, yeah, at this we're, point, we're, we're yeah, very this distractible is... today. Uh, sorry. No, no, it's no, not. Sylvie. This it, is Sylvie. I really mean it. It's not you. I don't. Okay, it's just a total coincidence. So this is a cover by Madame Data. Uh, you can find her on coast at Madame Data. I don't know uh, what her Twitter handle is. Uh, she plays this incredible mm. uh, 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 cover of Counterweight on uh, uh, guitar. It's just remarkable. The, the it's so theme, good. The long way yeah. around. Um, I'm a it sounds fan. so good on a guitar. It like was kind of shocking. I've never ever played it on a guitar in my life, um, which is uh, maybe a mistake. I should give I should give that a go. Um, uh, Jim Biddy Bim Bim says, speaking of music that sticks with you, I think about Jack's mini rendition of "My Heart Is a Fish" song from Ancillary Mercy every day. I'm so glad people like that. Um, it was something that uh, uh, I. It was one of those things where it's like, you know, uh, you have an idea and you just write down the voice note of it as quickly as possible. Um, but uh, I'm really glad that it that it stuck with people. Um, as their duke, my vassals owe me their allegiance. My word is law. But how much is obedience without devotion worth? In times of crisis, a slow response or a half-hearted effort can lead to disaster. Can I afford such a risk? I will win their unwavering loyalty. Fear is a far more effective tool. I have more important men to impress. So we can impress the Kaiser. We can gain... Uh, we can wound Mayor Benedicta. Uh, we can gain generous liege, but gain 19 stress. I think we should do this because we... Um, we I think we will lose some monthly income from this. Oh, Shit, you're right, Keith. Mm -hmm. uh, we should impress the Kaiser then. Like, play this flatly, you know? Yeah. Palapion mm -hmm. says, chiming in while listening to this, the podcast element is just as enjoyable as CK3. <laughs> Thank you. And I follow it up with either way. I'm chilling. We all have a lot of experience. We have a cumulative, I don't know, like... Uh, uh, 25 like years. 25 of... years of experience, <laughs> podcast experience. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, what do we want to do now? We maybe should... higher, maybe closer to 30. Take another six. I mean, right? when, when you factor in you alone here. I know, I like. I'm more than half of that, because I've been yeah. doing this since 2008. Uh, okay. Stupid, which is so stupid. It's an impressive <laughs> stat, though. Like, if they ever make basketball reference for podcasters, you're going to have some records on there, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do we take here? Um... Uh... Let's look at uh let's just look at um like the size of the city should help. There's like the city rating, I think. I think we should take what is fastest to take. Man, still got the the her or a border or something on the border so that we can like be re we can like not waste a bunch of supply and attrition. Yeah. Uh let's go uh here. Take this border town. Careful, because that's where that's where they're going, and that guy does not look like he's. Nope, that's us, Keith. No, there's another person. Oh, that is the enemy army. Yes, you're yeah. quite right. <laughs> uh, but we have. What? Hey, where are our allies? Oh, uh... they are. 
where are our allies? Oh, here they are. We've got we got a lot oh, of soldiers. Okay, sorry. We zoomed in and now we can see that they're defeated. The enemies are defeated and running away, and our allies are right there. And actually, that's some of our stuff too. We should um we should check and make sure that the supplies are are good, and then we should go back to our capital and hit uh, raise all here to raise anyone who's been resupplied. Okay, our supplies aren't, you know, our supplies are doing fine. Uh, yeah. Palapion says, yeah, it's- Sorry, like I meant reinforce, not resupply. Oh, right, Reinforce. Yeah. We should get our forces that have been sent back to the capital. Palapion says, yeah, it's like, listen, dude, I like the Criterion channel, I like emo music, and I like waging war on the HRE. <laughs> there we go. Great. Tick three boxes. Okay. One, two, three. Three Let's kings, see. there they are. <laughs> This is, a, this is a very old Patton Oswald bit from like forever ago that for some reason <laughs> me and Kyle uh, could never forget I, where uh, Sylvie, do you do you know? No, this? I was just going to say just the the way the the tone and the deliver like the just the phrasing of the joke. I was like, this is either comedy bang bang or someone adjacent this is, to uh, it. <laughs> this is Patton Oswald has a story on one of his albums about going to see the movie Three Kings and someone like in a row ahead of him, like when the <laughs> like during the introduction of the movie, like sees the three kings and then goes one, two, three, three kings. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> A nice early that's chappy. <laughs> uh, bad news, Abomai has died. Uh, just of old age. Um, so what we need to do is we need to appoint a new spy master. And a new uh, physician. Yeah. Oh, there are no great spy masters. There's syphilis expert. Hey, I we know. have this powerful vassal who hates us. Uh, Count Marianu, he'll like us a bit more when we uh, make yeah, him. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's not... true. He'll, he'll end up being. Yeah, plus yeah. 11. Uh, and then, yes, we need a doctor, and we need one now. Um, ooh, dear. Uh, uh, Panther Grace in the chest says, I can't decide whether or not to like Patton Oswald. It's hard to explain. It's not hard to explain. There's a lot not to like there. Yeah. But uh, I think he's fine. Whatever. Search for a physician. I, we have to bring in a guy, because all our current options are just average at best, and I am so syphilitic that I... I'm not playing. How syphilitic are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, they're all pissing about over there. I think they're trying to reinforce their city. How many guys am I? Uh, oh, two? <laughs> two soldiers. Trying to get someone killed? Trying to get a son killed? It's Count Torbenu and Mayor Frieda, <laughs> the only ones who have showed up. Hey, but they're they're full on knights, so that's good. Okay, we could bring in Alfia, who's average. Edolf is terrible. Geraldo is poor. Uh, I guess Alfia. No, because on... our wife is average. Hey, come on! Can't talk about her like oh, that. Oh, that's good. That's good. This is this guy's good. Okay. He's an herbalist too, so he'll he'll get a bonus that isn't the herbalist stuff isn't counted towards their skill, but it will help. I think I just miss Avamai, you know? Yeah, I just miss Avamai. You're more torn up about Av Avomai than Hernminan. Yeah, fuck that um, guy. Who? <laughs> Her 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 <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Kids has died. Wow. And we really oh, we liked hated Heilvig though. Wait. No, we didn't I don't think we liked Heilvig. Heilvig was like had all of the worst personality traits, I think. She was our primary, yeah, Keith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't like her. Didn't you not want to play her? Let's click. Let's click on her. Let's see which her her stuff was like. Oh, uh, she's not great, actually. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was really poorly statted, and she was paranoid Ooh. and arbitrary. She's a shitty kid. Shit. Nobody cares. It's We've like lost not even a bad eye. With Duke Herman. Oh, that's our biggest one. No, we still outnumber this guy pretty spectacularly, but uh, worth keeping. Oh, up. did you lose the? Okay, yeah, I was just thirty-five hundred one, I think. Yeah, he look. may not. He may not pull out mid in the middle of the war. I think he might be. Oh, uh, is this him leaving? I don't um, know. Where's he going? Yeah, he might be leaving. Oh, no, he's coming back. Okay, we're good. He's coming back. Okay. Whew. He's just keeping you on your toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shows up at, at your domain and goes, ah, and just like to <laughs> oh, you point should, at each uh, other and laugh. We're going to have to defend uh, that last 
Or we're gonna have to defend the cap. This one at some point. Yeah. Uh, I think we will beat them. This is four months. This is four months. Ooh. How much money does this guy have at this point? Can't be much. Good question. Can't be much. He has negative yeah. twenty three. This, this is exactly what we're talking about. He can't reinforce because he can't pay anyone. <sighs> That's great. It's great. Look, this, this is, is a great 53 situation. Three days us. left. This is three months left. And we'll take the city and then we'll go fuck. See up. that money that we've got? That two. We are two two seventy seven. We're making twelve gold. That's that, that, po that's that Pope money though, right? Yeah. He gave us like two fifty. So we're like, the Pope. Real. I gotta say, the Pope really showed up on this one. Who is the first army of Posny? They hate us. Where have they come from? Oh shit! Is he hiring mercenaries? No, that can't be right. Uh, this is a hostile army, not an enemy army. They're just an army that will attack us. So likely what they are is just a, a count or a duke's territory, and it's their army, and they're not involved in their legious war, uh, but they will fight us if we get in their way. Okay. Okay, good to know. Oh, it might be, now that I'm looking at it, this might be someone who's at war with Hungary that isn't us. Oh, we're going to we smooth that all over. Yeah, we'll smooth that all over. Okay. 81. 81. Let's go stop this. We have time to stop this. This is great. This is a confident victory. You will win decisively, says the game. Um. Oh, good question from Jay Harkins. Who is our heir now? Is it our daughter's daughter? It yes, is. That's who it is. Oh, we should make sure that we're educating this kid. What does biography mean? What? Oh, the only notable thing about this child is that her mother died. Oh, and we can add stuff. That's interesting. Oh, okay. I've never seen that. Let's see. Off a, uh, um, I think LOL into this off child's guardianship. Biography. Yeah, we should offer guardianship. And it should be uh, maybe us. Yeah. Oh, Anno's not bad, actually. Well, we get we have that thing that gives our our uh, the people that we're guardianing extra stuff, right? Or maybe Why we can. Why won't she oh, accept it? Because it's the it, because uh, it was a matrilineal marriage, so the this is like the duke's uh, oh, um, vassal. So Shit. even though even though she's our, this is actually really good for us because it means that when the duke. Because she's probably the Duke's heir, maybe. I think she is just looking at the UI. Let's look, right? at, let's look at the Duke. Let's look at the Duke real quick and see if. No, okay. The Duke has. No, it's this guy. Oh, I thought you meant the no, player this guy. Duke. But if we murder this guy, then our heir will inherit all this guy's no, stuff, he, too. No, because it'll no. go to Beatrix. No, we got to kill this kid, oh, too. Oh, there's a whole chain of them. Fuck. Yeah. And nobody we can make a ward will be accepted. Yeah, that's fine. We just gotta let it get let it roll. We should watch out though, because we don't wait, we should pause it real quick. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, Heinrich has died. There's a new oh, Kaiser. Look at that. Yo. There's a new Kaiser. How did he die? How'd he die? He drank himself. Oh no. He was afraid of the world. Oh dear, it's a hard life. Okay. <laughs> Got a new Craven, a new Craven chase. They're both Craven and Chase, I think. It's uh, you know, you know where. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to win this battle because they're about to take the city. But we'll yeah, let's make sure that we're actually going. Okay, okay. Oh, they're gonna take it. They're gonna take it. No, they didn't. <laughs> let's wow! go at the buzzer. Oh my god, that was. Mi oh wait, did they take it? I think the they did. Steph take Curry it. of War. Oh. Shit. Well, they're about to have no men whatsoever. Yeah, we're besieging the city now. It's fine. It's just gonna be forty-five days because it's already defenseless, basically. <laughs> yep. Okay, the kid who went to play has gone. We've captured uh, Countess Ms. Isn't that nice? Oh, I wish that helped a little bit more, but that's fine. But it doesn't. No. My lord, Pope. Celestinius of the Papacy has ended all conversation with you. Seeing my sudden interest in the amount of correspondence as a sign of nefarious plans, it appears as if he is under the impression that I am plotting against him. I'm not! Shit. Well, that's how it goes sometimes. That's how it goes. Actually, it looks like he still kind of liked us. I think it was just an incidental thing. Oops, shit. I misclicked. 
Get back to that seat. I think that this guy should give up. There's, he's got no money. He's got no troops. Yeah, how, how much money does he have? He has negative 16. Okay, he's made a bit more money, but... Okay, and we controlled Visgrad. All right, uh, everybody, time to take another city. We'll just do the one nearest to us, I think. I think that one's already taken, isn't it? Yeah, it's got the lines. We should go... Uh, I tried to scroll on your thing. I think we should go south to the one south. Or this one's fine, too. You tried to scroll on my screen share. If you look at the... You can sort of tell... Um, oh, based on the which development? Which one has the shittiest walls? Those are the easiest oh, ones okay, to take. Yeah. Oh, we captured King Solomon's guest, Mate, and two others. Wow. Yeah, we're, we're back up to 81. Oh, no. Anno and da Tag died. Oh, no. no. He was very old. Tag. Okay, he this was is, old. Yeah, this he was is going mid very well. However, I would like to remind the chat that our issue is actually once we win the war. I think we'll be fine. I think we win the war and it'll be smooth sailing. We want to. I don't think it's going to be a right? problem for Gerhardt, though. No, I don't think so. Oh, it is winter. I just know that he deserves to be king of Hungary, of whatever. Of oh, syphilis. God, <laughs> king of syphilis. Our um. I like that. I you know it's a it's a it's not great for for me being an impatient person, uh, but. But it is a good. It is nice that all of the AI heroes decided, like, oh, we'll just independently take different places. I think it's going to end up working out that we're going to probably need two or three more in I order think to so. win. And we are, we are, um, you know, uh, spread betting basically. Bed spreading? No. <laughs> Bed spreading? No. Bed spreading? <laughs> I never bet on anything. Oh, never made, never uh, made a I, legal or illegal bet. Yeah, you don't fine. need to. You don't need to. Um. Oh. oh. They're starting to come in. Our oh, prisoners died. Oh, Keith, add that to the total. Check. Okay, still will not accept, but this is about Yeah, to... they won't accept until 100. The crusade failed. Good. Oh, well. We weren't involved in that. There were, I forgot there was a crusade on. I guess there was a, the symbol for it was there the whole time. Uh, but we were involved in our own thing, Hungary. Yeah, we were busy with Hungary. Pope, you said to do Hungary. The Hungarian crusade. God, I have never been in a war that has been less costly. Look at this. I know. We made money. <laughs> Why don't people do this all the time? <laughs> oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. 94. We've got enemies here. We should stay. We should hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have 4,000 soldiers here. That. Oh, the prestige gain for this is. war is going to be here it is. wild. 100%. I can, I can feel it in my bones. Yes, okay, let's see. Uh, we captured Gurgly, Gurgly's grandson. <laughs> Great, Gurgly's grandson. Great, Gurgly's grandson. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. Oh my god, read them all, read them all, read the whole thing. We gain the contested title. Due to King Salomon's high rank, each of your acclaimed knights gains 25 glory. You gain the Kingdom of Hungary. You gain the County of Heves. You gain the County of Visegrad. You gain the County of Hont. You gain the County of Arva. You gain the County of Trenchen. You gain the county of Lipto. You gain the city of Puho. You gain the city of Popgrad. You gain the city of Segled. You gain the city of Nograd. You gain the city of Sholnok. You gain the barony of Gyongyospata. You gain the barony of Turok. You gain 535 fame. Your allies share 535 fame based on their contribution. All of your Gloryhound vassals gain 10 opinion of you for 10 years. Prince Lambert becomes your vassal. 
Duke Antle you... becomes your vassal. Duke Lamput becomes your vassal. Duchess Gisela becomes your vassal. Count Gurgly becomes your vassal. Prince Adon becomes your vassal. Countess Orsolia becomes your vassal. Countess Emise becomes your vassal. Countess Gertrude becomes your vassal. Count Vid becomes your vassal. Count Bator Obus, I fucking hate that guy, becomes oh, your not vassal. Oh, that fucking guy! Count Jacques becomes your vassal. Countess Anna becomes your vassal. King Salomon the Ill-Tempered of Hungary. Allies share 535 based on their contribution. Increases opinion of his allies based on his contribution. Spends 535 fame. All of his glory hand vassals lose 20 opinion of him because he lost. Now that you got the barony of Turok, like no one's going to be able to stop you. Keith, Keith, Keith. Yeah. Play it. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the one? the reaction every time we yeah, play yeah, yeah. on something. Oh, <laughs> like it's I great. always scream, yeah. Thank you to Chain Bastard. Oh. <laughs> and a thank you to Chain Bastard. And a Picture thank you to Chain uh, like, Bastard. Overlaid in the sky while we look up into the clouds. <laughs> thank you, Chain Bastard. Yeah. It's an, it's Looking down demands. at us from, from the sky. Oh my god, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. As king, you have new duties and responsibilities. You will now be expected to regularly hold court, solving the disputes of the realm and letting your courtiers take part in your daily routines. Jakob, who is Jakob? Oh, he's one of our knights. Is looking sternly at me in a direct, almost lecturing way. Perhaps there is also some surprise in his eyes. He starts to unfold a beautiful banner bearing the emblem of House Eticonon. That's us, Sylvie. One of the ways in which the world will now judge your rule is by how you adorn and care for your new royal court. I've taken the liberty to have this made as a gift to mark the beginning of your royal tenure. We've got the House Eticonon banner, which gives us prestige and renown. And our options are, let them see their new king, you will enter the royal court, or other matters called to my attention. Well, we got to enter the royal court. We've got to. I mean, you went through all this work to have a royal court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the worthless Gerhardt, may your years be short and miserable. You are an even greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. <laughs> oh. uh, worthless? Uh, who's got the kingdom and who's of unemployed? <laughs> who's oh now the lowly God. king of Ruthenia? Holy shit. Okay, so here we have some guests. This is our daughter, Prince Gottfried. That's us. That's our doctor. Kind of kind of lonely. But we oh, can wait, you got there's an actual throne room in this game. I know, it's oh, so yeah. cool. So we can And you can really deck it out too. Court grandeur and Sims medieval. Yeah, exactly. Set the kind of court we want, upgrade this shit. This is for the next stream. Set Normally our, our wife would be here, but she's still we haven't disbanded our But we have these two artifacts. We have our banner, which I'm gonna put on the wall here. Yeah. And we also have the banner that we stole from that guy. <laughs> and these all give stuff. Oh, look at that. Amazing. Now what we can do is we can hold court like this. It will be unavailable for five years. It costs 100 prestige. Ah, uh, we should do this next stream. This is this is a next stream thing, the, the yeah. royal court. Look at how how above our domain limit we are. We have we are very above. Yeah, we got a we got a bonus one because we became king. But then we we I mean, if you just look, can we just go to the map and compare the size of the new territory versus what we had? We gained about twenty times the land mass. We gained this. We previously oh right. <laughs> we're hungry now. Hey, we're hungry now. Hey, uh, uh, we're hungry now. Uh, we're hungry now. Time for dinner. Uh, hey, look at our gold. Look at our monthly gold, by the 17 way. 17 gold. Oh, wait. Disband all. Disband all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be amazing. Okay, 18.6, but it's going to increase. We can hold the court. That's fine. Uh, we are above our domain limits. That's fine. We have a contract expiring with the mercenary companies. That's fine. Our bishop is not endorsing us. That's fine. We'll, we'll get our endorsement. Oh, my God. God, look at this. Look at this. We did it. This wow. plan, this is this has been in motion for 12 Keith, you're hours right. it became of gameplay. Ruthenia. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. We have Hungary. Yo. Hungary, we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> They're calling us the Hungry Man. They are calling us the Hungry Man. Hungry, Hungry Hippos. <laughs> Hey, how's the Pope feel about us? 
Well, so firstly, Prince Lambert created the faction to install Maria on the Hungarian throne. I sort of anticipated this. Oh yeah, so this stuff definitely is going to happen. Hey, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the factions real quick. Okay, the Pope likes us quite a bit. Oh, actually, more than when we started. Is Hungary in the H? Hungary is Hungary in the HRE. It is. Oh yeah, this was huge for the HRE. Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine wow. being the Kaiser and just being like, they just fucking they did what? Took Hungary. Who did what? We got they took an extra country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, the factions, let's see. They're not good at this. For now. They have one member, Prince Lampert the Honest. What are his stats like? He's not good. Oh, he's not good. I might kill him. Maybe we could kill him. <laughs> no, looks like we can't kill him. But he's sick. I don't know, Keith. We could get some people involved. We could, you know, it's going to take a little bit because people join based on the, you know, the, the gulf in how much they like you versus how much they like them. So people who don't like you very much will uh, join your you're scheme right. if they hate. And, but everyone hates us because we're the new king and no one likes the new king. No, uh, let me see county control on a map. Also, this guy is like temperate and generous and shy <laughs> it's not an enemy maker okay we gotta get uh, a marshal in here to increase county control in yeah. heaves here in Visegrad actually it's seven, seven short years seven short years but I think this is where we are gonna leave it tonight this yeah. really has been a stream of podcasting what the fuck yeah. is Seljuk Oh, the next target. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to do this. The game makes it genuinely really hard to, um, you know, uh, play on that kind of level. The way we could yeah. begin would be if we got control of the HRE at this point, um, we could stop, you know, we could target the Byzantines I, and see. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it's like Poland and France and or England. We could take, we could, we could oh, do England like let's tomorrow. Y'all. Hang on. What? Um, Keith, what? Yeah. They're they're We don't have a Casus Belli, but we could find one. We could find one. Uh, I like the shape of the Holy Roman Empire in this stream started as Grimace with one sexy leg and now it's Grimace with a sexy <laughs> leg and a B tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it looks like a like a weird uh dinosaur. Oh, I can see it. Where the the where Hungary is the head of the dinosaur, it's yeah, like, yeah, in, like it bent downwards, yeah, yeah. It's kind of hunched like a like a raptor. Hey, you know who doesn't exist? Who? The Mongol Khanate. Oh yeah, they 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 won't be around for a little bit, and then it's gonna suck. <laughs> You'll get a notification when they show up. Uh, oh which no. Is, <laughs> which is yeah it's uh uh they have a little bit of a sense of humor about it they're like hey there's a guy in in the in the east that's uh been you know doing some damage out there and then it's like i've got nothing to worry about and then i think what the game wants you to happen is that you spend a hundred in-game year you spend 30 in-game years not looking at the map and then you zoom out and you're like oh my god all of Asia is one thing now. Uh, they usually break apart around, uh, like, the Caucasus. I had an absolutely incredible Crusader King save with KB last year. I, I think I might have talked about this at the beginning of this LP, where we, we broke the Mongol dynasty in a way that they could never recover from. It was like wow. they were starting to get really excited and we just bopped them on the head and said no, and that threw their entire plan. That's funny. I did the exact opposite thing where one time I intervened in the Mongols to like kill off the people who'd normally stop them from advancing and they were able to get like way further westward than they normally do. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. Um, but yeah, we uh, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, thank you for listening. We had a great time. We're very excited to get back to this. Thank you for being our special guest, Sylvie. This was such a treat. Yeah, yeah no, great. this was such a wonderful surprise. I'm, I'm glad I jumped on. I'm uh, sorry for bad mouthing, uh, Screamo. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm we'll send you some wrecks. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I've been trying to think of emo bands that I think you... Now that I know you like the the mathy Midwest... I'm like way into... Yeah, that. I feel like I feel like there's at least a few bands I could send your way. Um, silly, I'm sure that we've talked about bad Bad History Month. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Bad History Month are good. Um, they're they're like emo ish, mathy kind of music that uh were local Boston for a while that I was really into. That's mm-hmm. that's the stuff that I like. Oh, they put out an album last year. They did. They did put it. I haven't listened to that yet. Lord Kittenfoot in the chat says, love that the friends at the table are actual friends who just like to hang. Yeah, it's not just our yeah. company name. <laughs> it is. It's we don't. It's not just a gimmick. Yeah, it's 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 not our wrestling gimmick. It is our wrestling gimmick, but it's also true. Right. It's both. Yeah. Yeah. Um. OK, uh, we will see you soon. Uh, much like uh, Media Club Plus bonus odes, we can't promise when we will uh, return to Crusader Kings, but oh. we hope it'll be sooner than October. You know, last, last we last saw you in October. Um, things are about to get really weird, really weird in this save, if I know Crusader Kings, which I do. Uh, and I'm <laughs> so entertained that we are going to be able to show you all. I came. I kind of can't believe that we did it that fast. No, no, it, it was, was just fun kind, it was just like beautiful gift from the Pope. Where very early on, when we were still nothing, the Pope was like, "Hey, you want hungry?" And it was. It just felt like a joke, and we were like, "No, let's do it," and it worked. I I feel like over and over again, and you can see this if you go back through the LP. I keep agitating for us to go to war with Hungary, and Keith of all people is like, "Not quite yet. Let's let's wait a little longer." <laughs> And then there's this moment at the end of the last episode where you go, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, all right. Well, we hey, will wait. see you soon. Sorry, look at that little bit of Poland out near Ruthenia. What is... Hey, why is... <laughs> hey, why? Hey, look at the... Oh, yeah, no. I thought we mentioned the vestigial Poland earlier. Oh, we... I thought it was... We... It was I this was Hungary 3. three. Yeah. This... Oh, it oh, was Hungary, Hungary 3, and now it's Poland 2. Yeah, Poland 2. You guys got to find your own identity. Mini Poland. Oh, it's great. You go journeying sort of in this direction, and you just come up with countries you've never heard of in your life. Yeah. You know, like, we yeah. have Estonia here, and I'm like, yes, Estonia, I'm familiar with that. Is that place just called White Russia? Uh, it's, uh, yes. Well, uh, White there, Rus. I think, I think okay. there also is a White Russia that's different from White Rus. Oh, sure. Which My is favorite right, thing right up now, here is like Ireland. Eventually. <laughs> oh my god. I think this is actually Eastland. Uh, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is this? That's Norway, sure. Yeah, they say, what's, hey, what's that place called? And they're like, uh, Island. And you're like, did you say Iceland? And they're like, uh, yeah. Oh my god, Sylvie. Uh, there was this amazing moment uh, in the last stream where we realized that um, because of this weird quirk that the HRE had at this point, where we had a free Casas Belli on its borders, um, we could invade North Africa. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't think that would have gone well for you guys. I don't think I think we I think we thought about it, but it yeah. really it really kind of would have fallen apart pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, another thing that we can do next time, we could uh finish taking over Sardinia. Uh, yeah. That'll be get the, rest of Cor- get the rest of this of Sardinia, the rest of Corsica. Wait, okay. And we might be able to get Sicily too, or some of oh, Sicily anyway. So we are gonna get the Italians. <laughs> we are gonna get the Italians, right, yes. Wait. Hang on. Yeah, we just already have these. Wait. Are you, are you going to declare a war right at the end of the stream? I mean... <laughs> we could win this sort of immediately, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ooh, let's change. Let's, yeah, let's add a, a rally point. Also, did you save after winning the war? No, I'm going to do it now. There is an auto save, I bet. This war yeah. is not going to give us a problem. War. One hungry. And yeah, next time we go for two. <laughs> two hungry. Okay, everybody. He's raised four hundred soldiers. That's yeah. his soldiers. Yeah. Let's just hit three. Let's let's be crazy. Let's go. Let's just like. Don't we, you create don't liberty factions to, against? Him. We don't even want to rally our troops all the way. Oh. <laughs> It's just that we have so many troops now because of ho- all of Hungary. 
that we have more troops unrallied than we had fully rallied before. We got more factions being created against us. That's going to be interesting. This guy has uh, is pretty capable. We'll worry oh, about is, that. We should we should consider not doing this war. And oh, you know what we got to do? We got to throw a big party yeah. instead of the war. I think we could probably do both. Wait, is this prom telling you you can kill that Bator Obas who killed your kid? It's Count Bator time. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. I'm a little worried about this powerful faction, but... Yeah, it's, it's a warring faction. It can send um, an ultimate... One thing that we can do is we can just bribe these people and that'll really help. What, um, like a send gift? Yeah, we should, the one who likes us the most is, or like the who's members? greedy. Yeah, oh, the members, the greediest one is another thing. Oh, one of them is in prison right now. Oh, another thing is we should empty our prison. We should like let all of these people go. Just like. Oh, really? Yeah, because if we have anybody's relatives okay. in captivity. Well, that was sort of inevitable. Um. Okay. All right. Let's wait. Let's wait. Hold on. That was bad. Wait. Something's happened here. Okay. Look. This is a problem for next time. <laughs> we have, we were like we were we were a tightly constructed machine for five episodes, and then at the end of the episode, we got hungry. Let's start a war. We got factions. Hold on. Let's just. <laughs> Let's ill advised start this scheme that we know. I think this is my influence, honestly. <laughs> so I bring a loosey goosey thing. energy. Here's the uh. thing this save is from the 1st of January, 1100, where we yeah. have Hungary, but we have started the war. I think that I think that the six months is nothing. We haven't won Hungary. At this oh, point. we haven't won Hungary. But we will win. Oh, it. We, we will be inches away from it, I think. Probably. This is very funny. 81%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when we just do the the Yeah, let's just hit let's just hit speed 5 and let it roll. There's nothing that anyone can do to stop us now. Okay, the crusade fails. Yep, here we go. Okay, wait, hang on. What's up? Oh, oh, right. Her, uh, uh, his lover is having a baby. Now everyone okay. knows. Now okay, everyone it's not, knows. not too bad. Oh, shit. I seized a wild stag hide after the Siege of Ooh. Comoran. And hey, this is what happens when you slit load those saves sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we enforce the demands. And then we can disband everyone. And hey, now we're right back to where we were one minute ago. We can start to throw a big party and oh, let's let everyone out of jail. Let's do a big out of jail party for all of our Guys. captured Hungarian friends, new friends. My new Hungarian friends. Where are you? Here we are. Okay. Free. Free. Be free. I think the Countess we should let go for nothing. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, it'll help. It'll help make so we need some friends in Hungary. Be free. Be free. Be free. Okay, they're all free now. They're all free now. Great. And then next time we can get. Wait, Christina the... just died. She. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't, you know. Yeah, you know. Didn't anticipate did that best. one. We did our best. Double forty says it's on still, the way out. It's a form of being freed. But yeah, from sometimes. from from you know the world. It's a mortal coil. Look, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. the guards say, "Hey, you posted bail, and you have a heart attack." Yeah, exactly. They're going to send an ultimatum. We'll deal with this next time. Next oh, wow. Time. That's actually that's the, it's so close. I know it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. OK, Um. but yeah, we should resave and we'll have all those other saves just in case something wrong happened. OK, I'm going to call this. One, one hungry two. hungry two. 
going to be great when you come back and you're like, why do we have two That's one exactly hungry food? what it's going to be like. <laughs> yeah. All right. Does anybody want to plug anything before we leave? I mean, we've um, talked about Media Club Plus, but hey, go to Media Club Plus. Check out yeah, Media Club listen, Plus. Listen to Media Club Plus. Have you heard the bonus episodes where we talk about Dragon Ball? Ooh. That was so fun. We are going to record more bonus episodes soon. Yeah. They'll can, probably can I, be one. Yeah, can totally. Tease that? Can I tell them what that's going to be? Yeah, absolutely. Because like by the time the episode where we reveal it comes out, we'll probably have done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I think we'll have done both, maybe. Yeah, guess what? I'm making these guys watch JoJo. We're watching some Diamond is Unbreakable. Uh, we're watching episodes, I believe, three, four, and five of Diamond is Unbreakable, the Nijimura brothers, to start. Nice. So get ready. I'm, I'm ready. getting so excited about this. Uh, you know, part of uh, why I was so content to make Hunter Hunter with y'all was that when you know when my friends recommend me something, I will engage with it almost immediately. Uh, with with you know, it's, what will be will be, and I feel the same way about going into JoJo, where it's like I've seen a bit of season one. Uh, I have mm. no idea what Sylvie is about yeah. to subject me to. I'm very excited. I. My my mission statement was I wanted to show you guys what stands were and I wanted it to be enjoyable to watch, which is why I did not do anything in part three. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'm hoping that these land. I'm um, I'm stoked. I'm I'm really really excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, Keith, do you have anything? Um, yeah, just uh, friends of the table dot cash to friends of the table Patreon. That's how you get. Mm -hmm all of the awesome extra stuff that we do for Friends of the Table and the stuff for Media Club Plus. And why don't you check out uh, Run Button, youtube.com slash run button. If you haven't checked on out Run Button yet, why? Why not? Ask yourself. Yeah, I was having lunch the other day, Keith, and I put on some Run Button just for fun. Ooh. And I got to watch you and Kyle play um, a Sonic game that you were clearly not enjoying. <laughs> Oh, Sonic, you must have been the recent Sonic Superstars stuff. You were fighting Dr. Robotnik in a desert, and both yeah. of you were mad. Yeah, yep. Yeah, Sonic Superstars came out, and it's so disappointing. I think it was a fully priced $60 game, and it really was a buggy mess. It was really boring and bland. And uh, only a few years ago, um, an excellent team, um, I think headed by Christian Whitehead, famous Sonic a community person, um, uh, made Sonic Mania. Um, also a friend of Run Button, uh, Paul Veer helped out with art on that, did a bunch of art on Sonic Mania. And Sonic Mania is so amazing and perfect. And Sega has spent the last five years running away from the success of Sonic Mania uh, not making a Sonic Mania 2, yeah. not doing anything in the style of Sonic Mania and just pumping out much worse garbage. Uh, and so it was so bad that we went back to Sonic 4 and Sonic Mania to play just to be like, how much worse is this than these other much better, much <laughs> cheaper games? Uh, so yeah, you can watch us play Sonic Superstars and take a break to play those other better, older Sonic games. Sonic 4, which people didn't even like at the time. Um, yeah, I feel like I remember that being uh, yeah, not it was, as well received as, say, Mega Man 9 was, right. you know? And it was, Sonic 4 was, like, I think a little bit underrated. Um, but, yeah, the uh, the, the difference in quality is immediate and obvious. And uh, it's still a fun Let's Play. Um, we talk a lot about Sonic and about other stuff and get into the nitty-gritty details on everything that we're experiencing that we don't like. Um, if you want a Sonic game that we played that we like, check out Sonic Mania or maybe Sonic 06. I would much rather play Sonic 06 than Sonic Superstars. At least it's no. interesting. At What's least the one it's one where he kisses a lady? That's Sonic, Sonic 06. 06. I saw There's... some of you play that game. I saw you play some of that game like a decade ago, and it yeah, was yeah. amazing. It's famously like one of the worst games of all time. I yeah. think it's like really fun and funny. It's I bad. played all of that game by myself, like not Hell a yeah. screen. <laughs> I just rented that game and played it because I was like, well, it's the game I rented. I, I'll play it this weekend. I'm 13 uh, years old. It's the kind of game where like people never talk about Sonic Unleashed. Um, uh, well, people make fun of the Werehog stuff sometimes, but like Sonic 06 what? is so is by so much so big of a margin, the like famously bad Sonic game. But it's so interesting and weird uh, that I would much rather play that than Sonic Unleashed, where you some you most of the time play 
as a half sonic, half werewolf. It's very tedious. The it's day so levels are slow fun, and bad. but it's the, I, the honestly, I don't even think the day levels are fun, I, and it doesn't matter if they're fun or not because it's <laughs> legitimately one percent of the game. Yeah, it's a tiny fraction of it, you know. Um, but hey, hey, Sonic X Shadow Generations coming soon. <laughs> I've never played a Sonic is, game. Is okay. I like Generations. Yeah, I think Generations was like we, was like overrated because of how bad all of the surrounding and especially previous Sonic games were. Yeah. Um, Sonic Adventure. That's it still. Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2. Make a Sonic Adventure 3, oh, Sonic Sega. Adventure. They did. It's Sonic 06. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, Literally, that's what it was supposed they to be. They did, and it was Sonic But, like, actually do it now. Okay, well, they also have one called Sonic Heroes. That's Sonic Adventure 3, right? No. No. My friend, Sonic not. Heroes is okay. We are going to go to bed. Okay. Yes, that's a good idea. We could talk about Sonic longer than I could talk about emo. Let me that can't be true. I'm going to no, it's not. Uh, I can have a seven hour, intersection. I, I can have a seven hour conversation about Sonic at any moment. So that do is you, just the training that I have as a person. Do you like Sonic the Hedgehog? I Sonic the Hedgehog was as a kid my favorite series. It was the first video game I ever played was Sonic 3. I love Sonic, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Advance, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 were like two of my favorite games when I was like eight or nine. Um, I loved Sonic for years and years. And then it had just this horrible, tragic downfall where yeah. every single game got worse and worse and worse. Uh, and so I find it endlessly fascinating. It's something that I'll have a soft spot for forever. And then I played the Let's Play 20 Years of Sonic Let's Play thing. And so now I have just an opinion about every Sonic game. Every Sonic game. Yeah. Um, I have an unrelated story to tell you. Uh, it's cold right now in uh, in Ann Arbor, in Washtenaw County. Uh, it's not very cold. It's about 21 degrees, which is, you know, not pleasant to be out in with a wind chill. Uh, we went out for a walk and it was lovely. And we walked around this lake and the lake had this, um, this was today. The lake had, you know, was frozen around the outside of the lake. It was very exciting. So I, I broke off a big stick from some fallen uh, wood and was walking around and, you know, like using it to poke at the ice. Uh, Cause that's a classic thing to do when there's ice. Um, mm. And I was walking around, you know, walking this like loop around the lake, holding this stick, just in case there was any more ice. Uh, and I looked behind me and coming up behind me was a man and like a Labrador, a black Labrador. And the man and the Labrador walked past me and the Labrador kind of sniffed at my hand as he walked past. And as he got about six feet ahead of me, he turned round and came back to me with an expression on his face that said, you have a stick, don't you? Uh, and so I just gave him this stick that I had been carrying uh, th throughout, you know, the first part of the lake. And then it was the dog stick and he just walked off carrying the, the <laughs> stick that I had been using to poke at the ice. It was a very enjoyable experience. Lucky day for the dog. Such a lucky, well, lucky day for me because I got to poke at some frozen lake with a stick, yeah, you know? that's true. And it's a good thing, you know, sometimes it takes dogs a little while. I like that uh, it took him a minute of walking to realize, hold on a minute, back there. I think I saw a stick. I think, I think that's that mine. I, I think that's my stick now. All right. Good night, everybody. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye. Bye. Night.